the Lord faithful. One more time, cry for a visitation tonight. Ask the Lord to give you a visitation. This is Koinonia. Give us visitation, so God. Hallelujah. 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 I just want us to take one or two minutes and bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness in this house. Lift your voice and just bless. Father, we declare that you are faithful, taking us from glory to glory by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank him for what he's doing in your life. See what he's made out of your life. By his anointing, by his spirit, by his wisdom, by his grace. Thank him for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back again. I was away last week, but I was told it was a powerful service. And I bless the name of the Lord for that. See, the true symbol of leadership is not when you have one man standing and then a group of helpless people depending on that person. Um, that's not the symbol of kingdom leadership. The true index for measuring leadership is when you are able to make leaders out of others. A true leader does not maintain followers, transforms followers into leaders, and then lead us into agents of change. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for all the people that God used. Tonight he will speak to us again. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The apostolic ministry, please pay attention. The apostolic ministry is a very dangerous ministry. Um, the apostolic ministry is the kind of ministry that when you understand the demands spiritually, um, it may not be as attractive as it looks in the physical. In the physical, the apostolic ministry looks very flamboyant because you get to operate in all the other ministerial offices, prophetic, evangelical, pastoral, teacher. And so it's like they are usually standalone people. Then you get to flow mightily in the gifts of the Spirit. You command tremendous influence. And it beguiles many people to think that um, the apostolic ministry is just as easy as it looks. Believe me, believe me, when you understand the scope of carrying an apostolic and a prophetic anointing, you will run away from it. Hallelujah. Occasionally, you find out that the burden of the Spirit rests upon you. See, the apostolic ministry is such that you sacrifice your life literally. You don't just sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your life. God can interrupt your life and your activity any day and any time because he pours upon your spirit the burden 
that is carrying for a season for a people and you must stay in the secret place until you are able to articulate what is communicating and to birth it properly and trust me birthing spiritual things are painful So you get to a point where you will have to choose whether or not you really want to carry this mantle. That's why apostles and prophets in the Bible were lonely people. They were abnormal human beings. They were controversial human beings. Their lives, that's why many of them did not marry. Because I'm sure that God just said, look, let's, let's save women heart attack from the madness of these people. The the mantle will change you. It literally will reconfigure you into something you may not want. You are like a puppet under the influence of an agency you cannot stop. That's why the Bible says the church was built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. You know how thick a foundation must be to carry any structure. Any structure at all. Hallelujah. And so, sometimes when you find out that I retreat like this away, it's not just to go and play around. It's an intense communication of the body of the Spirit. And brothers and sisters, let me submit to you that if you want to do ministry God's way, you must not just love God, but you must stay on course at all times. He says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say. Because you cannot afford to speak to people um, the things that are not being truly communicated by the Spirit. There are people inside and outside. God draws them by Himself so that they will hear the precepts of the Spirit. And by the grace of God, in every city and in every region, God will always raise apostolic and prophetic platforms to not only regulate the spiritual climate within that region, but to serve as the gatekeepers within that region. Hallelujah. They serve as the envoys, the communicators of divine truth. They serve as the, the ones with whom um, divine realities can be communicated and so it is very very important that we realize and appreciate it truly let me tell you brothers and sisters the apostolic ministry is a strong ministry forget you can decide to do ministry men's way right but if you really want to carry the mantle and the grace of men like Smith Wigglesworth, William Seymour, if you want to become a continuation of this system of God's kingdom advancement, then you must stay. It will cost you. I've told us again and again, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are some things that are rewards. Listen, let me tell you. It is on account of this sacrifice that the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. It says he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not. It's not just because, you know, a lot of times men of God threaten people with curses. If you touch me, I will curse you. No. The Bible says a curse, causeless, shall not stand. So it's not just making pronouncements, but that there is a way that certain vessels sacrifice their, not just their life, their lifetime to carry certain communications of the Spirit for a generation. They may look strange, you may not understand. However, they are often at the pivot of kingdom activities. And I say this so that we can appreciate the truths that we receive here and do not trivialize them. Don't just see Fridays or any other day as, okay, koinonia, let's come, worship team, and then the word comes, and then you pray, and then you exchange pleasantries. It's more than that. God is making you become something. 
and you have gone too far even if you live right now it's like a virus you have been infected I lift my hands to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome God awesome God I lift my voice to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome God awesome God I lift my voice to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome Listen to what you are singing. I lift my hands to you. Awesome just the voices. Sing it from your heart. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Ask the Lord to open your eyes tonight. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord revealed something to me and told me to share it with the body of Christ. And please, I want you to pay attention to this teaching tonight. And I want you to give us many people, especially the ministers of the gospel. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. A true apostolic ministry is not bounded by this geographical constraint. This is just a platform. But the message is to the body. Hallelujah. I've spent my life studying the moves of God. Studying revivals. I have studied almost every known revival in human history that is recorded or at least noticed. I have studied the Great Awakenings. I have studied the Azusa Street Revival. I have studied the revivals in the times of the generals. Right from Alexander Dewe, Maria Woodward Ita, Madame Gunion. The European revival with men like Smith Wigglesworth. Great women like M. Semple McPherson and several others. I have studied the revivals in Nigeria right from the time of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder to great apostolic voices like Apostle Babalola of Christ Apostolic Church to the holiness movement that was pioneered by great men like Pastor W.F. Kumui and several other people and then great men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa and then the spiritual renaissance that happened in the last 10 years that was the last time a major move of the spirit happened 10 years ago not just pockets of revivals. The last major move of the Spirit. Ten years. And this is a ten year cycle. And another one is about to begin. 
You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Oh. One more time. I lift my voice. You're the awesome God. Listen, in every major move of God, there are three things that have happened. Number one, open heavens. A strange season where the heavens are unusually open. Dimensions of graces and possibilities that would not otherwise have been experienced by the people within that region. There is an unusual open heavens. Manifesting in healings, miracles, civilization, industrialization, whatever it is. Number two. Intense and heavy criticisms and persecutions. The move of God has always been characterized by intense, heavy, almost unbearable persecutions. Number three, many, maybe not all, but many of the moves of God were cut short of their full spiritual potential. Many of the moves that you read, both in the Bible, we see men like Samson, who was appointed to be a judge. The full potential of the manifestation of his ministry did not find expression. Men like Moses, who was supposed to take the people out of Egypt, the land of bondage, into the land flowing with milk and honey. Something seemed to happen in the middle of those moves. And I have spent my life studying it because the move of God that will return the Christ must be dealt with with precision, intelligence, and it must be finished to the latter. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, if you don't love God and the agenda of God, you will not find what I'm saying tonight interesting. If you are just a casual Christian wanting marriage, wanting a car, house, a good grade, and, and you just came because you are hungry, give me tea, give me bread, this will not concern you. But if you are one who is connected to the love and the agenda of God, this teaching tonight will resonate in your spirit. Many of you will not be able to sleep after this teaching tonight. Hallelujah. There are many reasons why revivals start. And there are many reasons why revivals stop abruptly. And if we do not identify some of these reasons, then we may not be able to completely live out the fullness of God's expectation. All over Nigeria as a case study, we see that there is an awakening campuses, different non-denominational meetings, even churches that will otherwise not be open to certain dimensions of the spirit. The eldership may not be open, but there is a renaissance happening in the youth ministry. The youth and the children, something they themselves cannot explain. And in the midst of the persecutions and the rest, it's like a fire that cannot be quenched. Are we together now? This is very important. 
But more tragic is the reason why revivals end. Revivals end because of a very simple factor. And it's called the humanity. The humanity of men. The humanity. Please pay attention. The very fact that men are humans is a big limitation to the sustenance of the move of God. Every revival, every spiritual pursuit that has gassed out happened because the humanity of men impeded the pace with which the spirit was going. Are we together? Now, let me tell you something. When God begins to use you, pay attention. When God begins to use you, the devil will never come to attack you. He will only attack you before you are being used. But if he does not prevail, he will not come when the move starts. The move of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit will be working in your life and hell will be quiet. Please watch this. You will continue building the churches, building the cathedrals, healing the sick, doing mighty things, and hell will be silent. Sometimes you can be mistaken that it is just your faith that is flawlessly defeating the devil. Keep going. Satan is not a fool. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. But he is not a fool. Satan has an advantage of age. And that advantage of age has afforded him the opportunity to study mankind. Are we together now? Before our dispensation of humanity started, he was there. And he has studied the moves of God right from Bible and modern history. And he knows that there is one factor. It's called the humanity of men. The humanity of men. The fact that men are human and frail is something that if you do not understand and create a spiritual system that overcomes your humanity, you may never last in the move of God. I lift my hands to you. I sing this song because I woke up with it while I was just waiting upon the Lord. I, I started singing it from the realm of the spirit. You know there are songs, I told you that songs are like ladders in the spirit there are times that songs represent what god is doing in a season so you have to keep singing them until the essence of their strength is ministered to you then the song will stop ministering to you not that the song has lost its power it has accomplished what it was sent to do there are many songs that have come from this altar and we sing it for a few weeks and then it just dies down it's an impartation. The songs help you rise to a dimension. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. One more time. Lord, we lift our voices to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. When John was caught up in Revelations, chapter 4 and 5, he was before the throne room and he began to see four living creatures that were a reflection of the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ. Because everything in the throne is a reflection of a dimension in God. Everything. From the elders to the creatures to the sea, right? To the rainbow, to the thunder. Everything is a reflection of the dimension of Christ. 
So when the Bible says his hair is as white as wool, it's a communication of his righteousness. When it says his eyes, is his face is like the brightness of the sun, and so on and so forth. Right? But there are four living creatures that communicate to us the different dimensions of God that are resident in man. The first living creature that John reveals to us, and Ezekiel also shows us, right? And Daniel the prophet also sees that. The first dimension is the face of a lion. The face of a lion reveals the dominion dimension of God. The fact that God is king. The fact that he is royalty. Incontestable with any king and any government. Please pay attention. The, the face of a lion reveals our dominion. It reveals the fact that we are kings and priests. According to Revelation 5 verse 10. It says we have been made unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign in the earth. So that dimension of God shows you that you cannot be under situations and circumstances. It lets you know that you are like him in the similitude of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Are we together now? When you catch that dimension, then you have the consciousness of who you are in Christ. You have the consciousness that you will refuse to allow life situations to put you down. Are we together the dimension of him being king. When he was born king, the wise men came and they offered gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh to the king. Hallelujah. Now but, when you come around that dimension alone, it has a consequence. And the consequence of camping around only that dimension is pride and arrogance. Having the revelation of your kingship and your dominion and who you are in Christ alone is not a balance. In one of the visions, the prophet saw the four faces in one body and then in another they were separate. Because they see in part and all of them prophesied according to the limit of their perceptions. Like when the Bible says the streets of heaven are made of gold. They are not made of gold. Gold was the best communication that his eyes could interpret with. It's more than gold. It's not gold. Are we together now? Is God helping us? And so we see that pride is the natural consequence of camping around that dimension. And so you have arrogant people in the body of Christ. Right? Right? You give them pure water, they throw it back at you and say, I'm a king. Kings don't take pure water. Get me Eva, cold one, in a tray. Serve me like a king. All of this childishness are manifestations of this exaggeration of one dimension. And God knows. So immediately, to balance it, the next face is the face of a calf. And a calf speaks of servanthood. And so you are reminded immediately that you are not only a king, but you are a servant. Are we together now? That servanthood dimension now comes to balance your revelation of you being a king. So that as you move around, I cannot do this, you will realize that the reason why you are given dominion is to serve. Many people hate being called servants because our theology has taught us that sons and servants, servanthood is an insult to sonship. Go and read your Bible and you'll find out that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The ultimate proof that you are a son indeed is when you become a servant. It says, permit this mind to be in you. Philippians 2 from verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. He said, although he was equal with God, a king, he did not consider it as a thing to be grasped. Then he reduced himself to become a servant, dying the death on the cross. So he says, let that mind be in you. That the moment God anoints you, you realize that that servanthood dimension must find expression in your life. There are many men who are not true servants, especially in the body of Christ. We have kings, Oga, but very few people are servants. 
That shepherd's heart, that servant heart, many men of God lack. They don't pray for their congregations. They cannot pay the price to serve. Jesus was teaching this dimension and he called the disciples and guarded his loins with a towel and got water and told all of them, come, I want to wash your feet. In ancient times, because they didn't have means of transportation like us they could use camels and the rest and then they could walk so when you came into the house of a man part of the respect is that their servants or other people would come to wash your feet to make it clean then you can get into the house and jesus said i want to do it for you that's why the disciples were amazed they, you can't do this come on we have seen you at the apex of your ministry you are a king indeed he said don't worry peter said no way i won't allow you then he told them something he said if i being Lord has washed your feet. Make sure you go and do the rest. It doesn't mean go and wash the feet of others. Take this ideology as you do ministry. That when you get to a point where you are king, remember you are servant too. Let me tell you something. The reason why many people never access certain dimensions of God is because that dimension is revealed and left for servants. One of it is the dimension of illumination and spiritual revelation. Until you become a servant, you will never have access to true light. The Bible says, Revelation 1 verse 1, it says the revelation of Jesus, which he gave unto his servant John. Right? He gave unto his servant John. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 1, when, when Moses was dead, hear God's testimony about him. He came and he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Paul, the very one who taught us sonship and revelation of our dominion in Christ, calls himself, I, Paul, a bond servant. The word bond servant, there, for you to understand the concept of bond servanthood, you must understand what we call the concept of jubilee. In ancient time, jubilee was after seven Sabbaths. That means seven years, right? Once the Sabbath year is always the seventh year. And so after seven Sabbaths, 49 years, the 50th year is declared a season of Jubilee. And certain activities happen in that season of Jubilee. Are we together now? Yeah. In the season of Jubilee, if you owed somebody or someone owed you, you release them. They go free. And then if you had servants and slaves that maybe you captured in the time of war, you would release them to go free. But watch this, if in the course of the slave's service to his master, the master treated him well and with love, on the day or in the year of jubilee, listen, when he now releases the servant to go, the servant will say, I'm free now, but I choose to return to you. Are you together now? I return not because you now captured me in war. I return willingly and I want to continue serving you because you are a good master. And that way, the master will now pierce his ears and put earrings in it as a symbol that, look, I am not violating Jubilee. This guy had an opportunity to go, but he came and willingly gave himself because of love, not chains. It was in that simile too. He says, I, Paul, a born servant. Meaning, I have a choice so, to pack up and say, God, I don't have any business with you. But the love of God has constrained me as though a man who is under chains. Are we together now? I, Paul, a bond servant. Paul rejoiced at the excellency of being called a bond servant than being called an apostle. I, Paul, a bond servant. A bond servant. At the end of his life, he looked and he said he was the least of all the apostles. That it was a privilege for him to have served. Is God speaking to us? Two dimensions. Now again, just like the first, there is a limitation too. When you stop and come around you just being a servant alone. Are, are you getting blessed already? When you stop around that dimension, the trouble is, you can get to a point where you can literally kill yourself. And so the next face gives you a balance. The face of a man. That's where your humanity comes into place. The third revelation 
that balances up servanthood is your humanity. There are times that people walk their lives out in a bid to pursue the agenda of the kingdom. People literally wear away their body. One man in modern history and modern revival who was a victim of that was the Welsh revival. Right? Um, what's his name? Many of you don't know them. Evan Roberts, thank you. Evan Roberts was a young man. He lived only a few years after the revival and he died. Because he got to a point where, like I'm sharing with you, the burden of the Welsh revival... I mean, the city of Wales and all this place was catching fire. People will literally read about the, the revival on newspaper and then explosions of the gifts of the Spirit, explosions of salvation and the rest. And he felt a need. He was so tired, he was not sleeping, he was not resting, he paid little attention to his health. And he literally weared himself to death. The third dimension that we see in the throne room is the face of a man. And this is very important, especially for men of God. Because sometimes we are embarrassed to admit the fact that we are humans. Because we, we have taught a theology that absolutely lets us know that we love God and we fear God, which is correct. But then we are embarrassed to accept our humanity. And we wear ourselves out. There are men of God who are embarrassed to eat food. They don't eat where people are because they feel that if I eat, you would think I'm not fasting, I'm not a, a serious person. And people do all kinds of things. There are people who, who specifically work themselves to being lean intentionally. Not necessarily because he was fasting that made them so. It's like a pride because it looks like those who really carry the anointing are not fat. They say, watch A and B and C. Why will you be like this? We don't trust this anointing you carry. And so people literally strangle away their humanity in a bid to justify that they are spiritual. Jesus, your Savior, who was the Christ, got to a point in his life where when he went to funerals, he wept. When they told him, Lazarus, whom you love, is dead. He went and he had to break down. It never meant he was not God. Are we together? He broke down and wept. When John the Baptist, his cousin, was told that he had died, he retreated away from ministry and ran to a mountain just to go and mourn John. And when he went to mourn John, people just heard he was passing. Let me tell you something. It's amazing the kinds of expectations that people have for you when you carry the anointing. They don't expect you to be human. Are we together now? Absolutely. So let it not be strange to you, men of God, when you find out that people's expectations, you can walk yourself to death. There are people who call maybe around 1 or 2 o'clock. And I pick and I'm like, ah. And I say, ah, apostle, you are sleeping. <laughs> now, I don't understand the meaning of that. But if I do, this is what it means. Come on now. I mean, I'm sleeping, you are sleeping too. Who is praying for who? <laughs> See that? And sometimes, as funny as it is, that statement embarrasses you. It looks like a sting to your... your your spiritual perception, the way that they have perceived you. And you feel, no, 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 no. I wasn't sleeping. I was just nodding my head around. I will soon read the Bible. Are we together now? The face of a man. There was a time on Sunday... Jesus was hungry. I'm sure after service, he was on his way and he just meandered into a field of corn. Ha! And the people saw him. And they were surprised. And then this and that and that, he had an encounter and then he ate corn and people were saying all kinds of things. There was a time that um, the prophet was hungry. Have you read that? Who was hungry? Say it again. Was as soon as he got to the woman 
the widow of Zarephath. He said, Madam, water. Not what is your problem. Madam, service my humanity. I'm dying. I've trekked a long distance. While she was coming, he said, please prepare bread for me quickly. And the woman said, Abba, man of God, be, be fair on me. You are a prophet. Don't you have the eyes to see? What happened to your eyes? There was a time, the family of a prophet, they were about to carry the children as collateral. Is it in your Bible? There was a time, Elijah, the fiery prophet, was afraid. And a woman made him run. A man called down fire on soldiers, but ran away from a woman. He ran away to a point that God had to say, Elijah, why are you here? He said, God, God. Just follow me. I'm, I'm coming with a very powerful message. Are we together now? Humanity. Jesus, the Christ, almost aborted salvation willingly. Many of us do not know. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, limitations. Jesus was tempted like us in every way. One time, um, let me share with you something very humorous. Uh, I think we're, we're somewhere and a very pretty lady was passing and we're all looking. Me too, I was looking. Listen, <laughs> when I was looking, I noticed, I won't tell you the person who, who was with me. He now tapped me and said, ah, apostle. <laughs> and I quietly, I was, not to mean, ah, man of God, what happened to your spiritual seriousness ah no 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 you are not supposed to be seeing this you are supposed to be seeing men like trees <laughs> hallelujah never forget that part of your construction of being like Christ. In that design, your humanity was not taken away. It was left there. Jesus at Gethsemane looked at the Father and for the first time, he wanted to reject being the Word. Because the Word means living logos, meaning a manifestation of the thoughts of a man. Anything Jesus was doing, that was what the Father was thinking. Are you following me now? And for the first time, he wanted to do what God was not thinking. He said, Father, if it be thy will, Kai, mm. let this cup, brothers and sisters, if it happened to Jesus, it will happen to you. I know that you will receive this. You will hate me. You say, he has come back now. I'm back. Are we together now? If it be possible, take this cup off me. But then he quickly remembered. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Here is my heart, my mind, my everything, take it as yours alone. Sing it one more time. Here is my heart, my mind. Lord is my heart, my everything. Listen. The humanity of man is a very serious part of him. We overlook it, but this is the part that destroyed people in revivals. Let me quickly just round up the four living creatures and then we'll get into the crux of the matter. Sometimes, God brings the balance again. You can be so human, listen, that if you allow your humanity to have a toll on you, it will cause the devil to wreck you and destroy your life. Because you will give excuses for everything and say, I am human. 
Are we together now? And so a pastor gets to a point where he's weak and weary and he starts sleeping around with everybody and if people are saying he who does not have stone to have um, seen to cast the first stone. In 10 years I slept with two ladies. Wouldn't you clap for me? Didn't I try? You know, we are human. And people say it's true. It's true. That was what Jesus invoked to free the woman who was caught in adultery. He said, he who does not have sin. In other words, whoever among you here who wants to claim his humanity is not finding expression, cast the first stone. And the priests and the Pharisees remember the things they have done around the temple that people have seen. Just threw the stone and went away. Then the final revelation is that you are divine. The face of the eagle. So when you get to a point where you are so human, sometimes it can bring weakness in you, inferiority in you, and it can let you see that this assignment is impossible. No, I can't do this. God, you are giving me a mandate to the nations. I'm, I'm only a child like Jeremiah. I'm only 21 years. I'm only 30 years. I'm only 40 years. I'm only 50 years. Or I'm alone. And he told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. I'm aware that you are human. Or like Moses who said, Lord, I'm a stammerer. Stammerer, are you deaf? Have you not heard me pray to you? How long did it take you to get the words together? I'm a stammerer. And God said, who created the body? Do you not know that you are divine? You must get to a point where you realize that in spite of your humanity, you are divine. That gives you comfort. Hallelujah. Now back to revivals. So that you can appreciate the things that I'm saying. I showed you these four dimensions. Because every one of them represents the progressions of two revivals. It first starts with revelation and access. Possibilities. Before God begins to use you, He brings you to a point where you see that the nations are conquerable. Have you seen people like that? Oh my goodness. About to be used by God. Lord, I can take this city. Give me Zaria. Give me Nigeria. Give me Kaduna State. Give me the north. Give me the world. I can establish the church. Lord, you are revealing to me that my ministry will have 1,000 branches. I'm ready for it. That's the lion speaking. Because the lion is a bold animal. Are we together? The king of the jungle. Fearless. So you say, Lord, it doesn't matter. I will heal the sick. Let them criticize me. I will heal. Then God says, all right, thank you. This is all I want. The gates be opened. Then you become a calf. And then... By the time you are serving people, the very people you are serving begin to stab you. You start a church and somebody comes to collect the church from you. Ah, You were not told that that was part of the things you will meet in the journey. When the brothers, remember Joseph showed us this. He woke up and had a dream and said, I saw it. The sun, the moon, 11 stars were bowing down. And the father looked, you say, you mean even me will bow to you? Don't say, are you joking? This is my destiny. But he did not know the progressions that will lead to that destiny. Are we together? Then his brother betrayed him. Before he would reconcile, they now sold him into slavery. Before he would settle on that one, a woman now comes. He was almost, I'm sure you would think that promotion was now coming for him, that they were making him Potiphar was now liking him. Then, that thing that was supposed to be an advantage, one day he goes to Potiphar's house and meets a woman who looks at him. And that becomes the source of his trouble. His service and faithfulness to Potiphar got him into trouble. And then, to jail. Then he now interprets the dream to somebody who forgets about him for two years. Are we together now? And then he became human. He broke down. Listen, let me tell you the truth. And men of God, learn this. The moment you begin your journey of servanthood, realize that you are human. So when a revival starts, Satan will never strike when it is the lion that is moving. Keep moving. 
Oh, all of you come and see what God is doing. There is a move of God in this nation called Koinonia. Look what God is doing. Joshua Selman. And everybody is happy. Then he begins to serve. Mm. Then a day comes, you look and say, is he only Ben God that will preach or pray? Then a day will come, you now look and say, what does it take to sit in front here? Then a day comes when you begin to go through fierce persecutions. Your church suddenly turns to you and says, we have noticed that there are some radical young people in this church who are not complying by the constitution of the church. And we are about to take a very decisive action. And you are wondering, that is me. And then you stand on stage and the preaching is all about you. There are people, some of you are sitting here looking at me. And these people are the ones who insult elders. And they do all kinds of things. They pray in one language like that and so on and so forth. And, and then you are amazed. Your life becomes, first you will, you will pretend you can take it. That's usually how we are. Ah, forget it. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's not today. Ode she. <laughs> then you continue. The church starts. The ministry starts. Right? Or as a sister, the marriage does not come. Lord, I will keep serving you. Marriage or no marriage, what is a man's self? The devil does not come then. That's just a servant speaking. Wait until the human starts speaking. A day comes in your life, no matter who you are, you will have to stand face to face with your humanity. Servanthood reaches its end. And it says, I've tried. The Bible says, do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn, Because even it can be tired. Are we together now? It is at this point where your humanity comes in. The reality of the vicissitudes of life. You are serving God in ministry, but you just hear a news that somebody in your family died. And you are saying, what is, what is going on? As if that is not enough, you just hear that your elder sister's husband beat her and threw her out. And said, Lord, you are faithful. I will give you thanks in all things. The servant is still speaking. Satan never comes. It's like a spiritual meter. He keeps watching. And then a guy comes into your life and you are happy. You are saying, Lord, so finally, this is how you have planned it for me. Before your smile finishes, he just sent you a text and said, we went to pray. And honestly, they told me you are not the one. It's not like you are bad. It's just that you are not the one. You now add the balance of that pain on what has been there. And a day comes like Jesus, you will break down. Listen, people lie in church. That's why we don't access to it. Those times are the times you go to pray and there are no words to say. You just keep moving up and down. It's not like you don't have prayer points. You don't even know what to say. You don't know if it's tongues. You will start or praise and worship. You play a song and off it back. The song that used to bless you is like it's irritating you. Hmm. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you gotten to that point in your life? Where as a man of God, you carry your Bible and you can't read it. It's not backsliding. You open it and you don't know what else to read. At that point, the devil is ready to come. When Jesus was fasting to prepare for ministry, Satan was just hanging around. He knew there was a time he would come. When Jesus was weak at the apex of his humanity, then Lucifer comes and says, Jesus, Jesus barely answered and said, Kai, but you say, Abba, how can you be killing yourself when it is within your power? Have you forgotten you are the word? If you have forgotten, let me remind you. Once my master, always my master. Let me remind you, Oga, oh you can turn stones to bread. Don't think Jesus just say, oh, God forbid. No, it's not true. It's not the way the Bible puts it. There are possibilities you may never consider until you are a human being. Are we together? 
you made a vow that you will never marry a married man as a second wife. And a time comes when your humanity comes. Satan can come directly or through a friend and say, see, there's a way we do it. It's not, are you a fool? There's a, you, can, you can plan this thing. And for the first time in your life, you will, you will be shocked that you are considering that possibility. You will rebuke yourself afterwards. But at that point, or the first time a married woman now looks at a young man of 21 and something rings in her that can't I have this boy as a sugar son? Since this stupid man is not, is not around. Now listen, those who do not understand spiritual growth will criticize those people and say, I'm, I'm disappointed. How about my mother? No. Humanity. Are we together? I've seen pastors who got to a point where they told them, look, you are suffering, no? If you want ministry to move, what is there to wash your eyes? Abba, you are behaving as if you are the only one. After all, the most important thing is your salvation. Are you not born again? He said, yes, I am. Let them wash. It's an addition. It's all, it's still God. No matter how it comes. But let me tell you, you get to that point. A man of God once called me and a prophet told him that he can help him and, and fix some things and there were certain flakes and leaves that he would bury around the church. True story. And he'll be fasting for seven days. He said at the seventh day, even if a pin passes his head, is over him, his eyes will see it. It's easy to talk when you have crowd. Wait until you walk with 12 people for three years. The devil will, he will come before then he will allow you. Have you seen people like that? You want to give them something, they refuse. God forbid, leave them. When they search around, no options. You now come and say, are you in any way interested in this? It has happened to ladies. A guy will ask them at 24, say me. You look at you. The guy will leave them. You will come back at 35 and say, I'm still around. Say, please, I don't know about... He say, I thought you said God. Say, say, forget, God has spoken again. The humanity of men is something that killed these revivals. Watch this. So when this revival is started, Satan tried to stop it. But when he found out that it was too late, he said, I'm coming back. Read your Bible. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. And he waited. At the apex, he now started bringing people into the meeting. And they started saying, look, the whole city is already taking this man... We are losing our ground here. Let's start coming up with something. And all of a sudden, Judah started looking at the treasury and said, me, I know what is there. I'm the one counting the money. Why are we not helping ourselves? The Bible says those who walk by the altar should live by the altar. What is all this one? I can't be holding money that I'm not spending. All those motions are Satan coming back. There was a time he entered Peter and spoke to Jesus. And Jesus looked and said, Kai! Get thee behind me. And Satan said, you saw me. I'm coming back. This time around, he came in through Judas. That's what happened to Samson. Samson got to a point where he tore the lion. Satan said, leave him. Kill the lions. Continue. And then at the point where he needed a wife so desperately, a strange woman came called Delilah. Samson was helplessly under the influence of this woman till he lost his, his, um, his hair and his eyes. Catherine Kuhlman was a woman of power. This woman moved in dimensions of the spirit very few people in our generation have walked in. But the time came she remembered that she was human. She wanted a man in her life like every woman will. And her keyboardist the people who would come to church and play. Her humanity caught up with her. And her inability to manage that humanity aborted certain things. Alexander Doway got to a point where people exalted him. He was the spiritual mayor of his city. And then he got to that point and men said, look, there is no difference between you and Elijah. We can literally put the Bible and see that you are him. If I said, no, 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 all glory to God. 
after a while he said truly but me too let me talk to myself i'm really elijah and he went and dressed in elijah regalia and died are we together william branham the uncommon prophet a man whose eyes were like that of an eagle he would be talking with you a stranger as if you have met it's not just like word of knowledge okay your head is this um, your this is that you have ten naira in your wallet no i mean you'll be talking and say femi um how are you how is rema this is how he talks this is a stranger he has never seen say so what's the other challenge in, in in rema what what is the problem uh, but have you considered discussing it with uh, your uncle Ule? this is this is a stranger that's how william branham operated it's not just like he will give you a word of knowledge, then you will confirm. You don't have to confirm it. He's conversing with you. Yet he got to a point, a hollow was literally seen on his head when they snapped him. He operated in that dimension of grace. But he came to a point where his humanity started tampering with the divine revelations he was writing. And he started writing certain teachings at the end of his life that became an error that even certain sects in the body of Christ have not recovered from today. Satan comes to you at a point where servanthood has led you to see your humanity. At that point where you are down, then he comes. He comes with suggestions. Very subtle yet forceful. He comes with all kinds of things. I say this not, not in criticism to the glory of God. The latest of this catastrophe that happened to the body of Christ happened this year. Right? I say it because it's something that is known. God TV. Rory and Wendy Alec. God TV is about maybe the second largest TV, Christian TV station after TBN. Is that true? TBN right now is almost, it's, it's, it's almost down. You know why? Because at the apex... When several things were happening, Crouch, um, 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 Jean Crouch, and then the other man, they are all dead now. At that point, the woman was struck with cancer. Bam! And it became an indictment in the ministry. Then all kinds of scandals started evolving. And before you know it, their humanity caught up with that reality. And right now, the ministry is where it is. God TV! Benny Hinn, at, as at the beginning of this year, when they were buying a, up a property in Plymouth, right? Benny Hinn was there. Look at all the notable men of God that came around. They held different regional meetings. Great men like um, Matthew Ashimolo and the rest were there. While that was happening, the financial ministerial burden on the man was depressing him, his humanity. They needed millions of dollars within a short time to pay for that place. And it was depressing him. And in that depression, he started, you know, when people are humans, they become stupid. They do things you never believe can happen. And so he started having an affair with a woman outside of his wife. Very beautiful woman. See that? And then when the world was about to say, we see the revival that is coming. One day he got up in the place of work and told the world, I quit from God TV and left. Left the ministry till today. The great man of God, Benny Hinn, a figure that we know and we admire and love so much, about three years ago, was preparing to go for a crusade when he was almost collapsing. And people said, no, this is, this is terrible. I mean, this is a man, this is a healing evangelist. He went to the hospital. They had to give him magnesium shots and all of that. And shortly after that time, in February that year, preparing for another crusade, and a divorce letter comes. In less than 24 hours, about half of the partners in the ministry left. Benny Hinn. Our great Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn was broken. Benny Hinn was broken. My wife... I have taught on integrity in marriage. We have grandchildren. When a grandmother leaves her husband, that's a serious issue. We have grandchildren. 
Couldn't you just endure? No, we are humans. I don't know if God is ministering to you tonight. One person that has overcome is Benny Him. I love him. He has shown the world in modern day that it is possible. When they were joining him and the wife I was watching, I followed it. And I looked at him. I said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, you have shown with the people coming that it is possible. A man can conquer the grip of humanity. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Revival that fell fell because Satan struck at the point where the people were humans, but they did not sustain the technology in the spirit. They didn't know, they knew how to receive power, but they, they, they did not know how to conquer this body. Paul said, I beat my body daily. Is it in your Bible? How many times? Daily. He said, let, let it not be that after having preached, I myself will be a castaway. Isaiah shows us the key. Chapter 40, please. Shiva Kata For some of you, you will not need this message now. You will need it 10 years from now. You will look for this tape like the deer pants after the water. Verse 28. Isaiah 40 verse 28. Now you will understand what the Bible was saying. Help us media. We will read down to 31. Hallelujah. And so, he began to tell us, watch this, Has thou not known? Question. He said, Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, you know what everlasting means? No weakness. No backsliding. Every time the Bible begins to give God these qualities is because he's trying to contrast him to the limitation of man. He says God is everlasting. There are no breakages, no rising and falling. He says, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Listen, the Bible says, he what? Faints not. So the Bible is talking about fainting. Mm. This is not backsliding. This is the humanity of man. He's helping us and showing us a key that will keep us 30 years in ministry. And when all the dust settles, you are still standing. Are we together now? 30 years in life that people will not look at you and say, I remember promise. There was a time this guy carried fire. There was a time in Zaria or in Abuja. If you talked about promise, you were synonymous. But right now, he says he fainted not, neither is he what? Weary. Then he says, there is no searching of his understanding. In other words, there is a system in him that makes that possible. And he's about to reveal it to us. But he says, he giveth power to who? The things. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Everybody read if you are a Christian. One, two, read. Even the youth shall faint and be where he stop. Did he say may faint? The Bible says the glory of the young man is in his strength. But he said no matter how strong you are, if you are in this world, your humanity will catch up with you. He says the young men 
shall faint. A day will come your courage and your, or your audacity will come to a point where you do not even know what to believe again. Please go back, go back, 30. Just stay there. 30. It says, and the young men shall what? Mm. This is a prophet speaking, you know. He's not just a messenger. He's a prophet. And then he says, this is a possibility that you can come to. In ministry, in life, as a student, it's easy to see five carryovers in 100 level and say, God is faithful. Your latter will be greater than your past. But by the time you are in your final year, final session, and you see two carryovers all second semester, you come, you come for koinonia by two o'clock, and you sit alone. When people are making noise around you, you, you just go outside. And people are saying, are you okay? Have you been in a situation where food becomes like a resentment? You don't even want to eat. You don't know whether you are hungry or not. You don't know what part of your body is paining you. Is it your head? Is it your hand? If somebody is talking to you, the voice of people literally is like noise. You want to be alone. This is the name of where you have gotten to. The realm of weariness. I heard of a great man of God in this country who because of depression a few years ago was almost committing suicide I, I can't mention his name you know but if I mention his name I, some of you will be discouraged and say I can't believe it no please tell me it's a joke literally suicide it was another man of God that called him and said you can't do this you can't do this you have come too far hallelujah the humanity of Judas caught up with him he said there's no remedy if he was only patient for two more days salvation would be possible for him if judas was was just patient for two more days there was a possibility that with the resurrection of jesus he would be free and the guy went he didn't manage his humanity he hung he bought a field with the money hung himself and died god is ministering to people right now who you are at a point where your humanity is eating up with you. Your humanity. You are anointed, but you have not prayed for days. The truth is you don't even know what to say. The problems from home are overwhelming. Your father that you have been managing, you have been thinking that this man is improving. He has now done something stupid. There is an episode for the week he does. But the one for last week has discouraged you and you are saying, will I continue like this? From one bad news to another, when it keeps piling upon you, brothers and sisters, it will shit you bad. That's why the Bible says, in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, it says, they that know their God, the first thing that will happen to them is what? Strength. Strength. The first fruit, the first benefit of really, really knowing God is strength. Strength there means capacity. Capacity. That you stand through the storms of life. You stand through the challenges of your humanity. I'll never forget a man who was on his way to go for a program with his children and they were on phone and the next thing the line just caught and he thought it was just um, maybe network and all of that and trying to call back he just heard that somebody called and they told him please an accident just happened. All your kids dead. And he went and still preached. I mean your children, not spiritual children. Physical children. They died like chickens. Not that they have been sick for three years and you have expected that they may pass on and prepare for it. One moment you are talking with children who are happy and then a line goes off and then they tell you they are all dead. Not in coma, dead. Listen, if you are living in the world of today, you must be prepared. You must sustain capacity to absorb the shocks that life brings if you want to stand. Otherwise, a time will come when you see people go to herbalists is because of their humanity. 
At the beginning of the sickness, they vowed they won't go to any herbalist. They won't go anywhere. But by the time the leg starts producing pus, and they said they are going to cut off everything, or by the time they say the cancer is spreading around the body, at that point, they will say, look, there's somebody. Don't, don't chill. Don't. At that point, you won't know when you will enter a shrine with a goat and say, please do whatever you will do. Your conscience is judging you, but your humanity is ignoring it. A time comes when a lady, because of her depression, just gives in to a man and says, sleep with me. Do whatever you want to do. I'm human. I can't stand this. I've endured for 11 years. Taking care of myself, this is too much, please, if it will help me. Years ago, when we used to meet inside the campus, I shared a very touching story that made me, it, 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 it did something to me. There was a woman who was walking through story with a man. And the, nobody in the family was walking, the father, everything. She was, the pay was too bad. And the family was at a point where they were choked financially. I mean to the core. And the woman went to the boss to plead that can he please give her a raise or promote her or give her extra jobs. And the man smiled at her. He had now gotten what he wanted because she was now vulnerable. And he told that woman, a married woman, he said, you know what you do. If you are ready to comply by the terms, I will promote you. She first refused. But when the financial burden pinned the family to a point that it was a matter of life and death, people were sick, no money to take care of them. She discussed with her husband and said, you are my husband, at least I'm not cheating on you. It's with your consent. Can't I just sleep with this man? I know some of you will say, God forbid, keep quiet. You see some of our elderly ones here just keeping quiet, listening to me. Many young people will say, God forbid. Don't say God forbid until you are in a position that really pushes you to the wall. And the man gave her a consent. And she went and slept with the man. Truly, truly. He gave her a long sum of money. She was so frustrated afterwards, she left the job. Men have done things in our world because of the reality of their humanity. Their humanity has caught up with them. And their inability to sustain what I'm about to teach you. There are preachers right now who are broken and discouraged. They don't know what to believe again. They have preached every message they want to preach. There are people who have practiced all the laws of prosperity they know to practice. Nothing is working. They are at a point where they are frustrated. There are families right now. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. They have done everything. They told the man to leave that one and get another wife. He said, no, I'll be faithful. But now it's seven years. And the man has already given the woman a last warning. If by December you are not taken in, I will leave you. Please go and look for another man. Many things that you will not accept when pressure pushes you to the wall, you will look at them and consider them passionately. Then the Bible tells us, here's the formula. 31. Media help us. 40 verse 31. Awesome God, I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. But they that wait upon the Lord, it says they shall what? He didn't say they will hear him speak. They will renew their strength. He says they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Then they will run. And Satan is waiting for when they will be weary. But he will never find that place. 20 years they are not weary. He says don't worry. After 21 years they will be weary. 30 years they are still moving. Because like God, they have caught the system. There are men who Satan has been waiting for when they will go down. And he has found out that days are turning to weeks. Weeks to months. Months to years. Years to decades. Because of this system. That those who wait upon the Lord, they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So although you are human, when you started the ministry, they said, leave him. When building projects starts, 
all your anointing and revelation will scatter. You will stand and you will preach John 3, 16 and you will quote Revelation 1, verse 1. But then like play, they will see a beauty rising. Rising. And then they will say, don't worry. By the time members start criticizing him, in the midst of it, you are still moving. You have sustained a key in the spirit. Are we together now? And the key is that they that wait. It's not just about fasting. It's a spiritual system that remedies for the encumbrances of your humanity. Since the Bible says for the fact that you are human, weariness and fainting and falling is an inevitable possibility, humanly speaking. Then he gives you a strategy. He says every time you start sensing that your humanity is dominating your spirituality, he says, wait upon the Lord. It didn't say go to God and go and discuss. It just said wait upon the Lord. For when you wait, among the many things that will happen is that there will be a renewal of what? Strength. Proverbs chapter 14. I leave my hands to you, awesome God, awesome God. I leave my hands to you. You're an all. 14 verse 4. I leave my hands to you, awesome God, awesome God. Go ahead and read it, everyone. One, two, read. He said, but much increase is by what? Of what? An ox. Listen. He said, much increase comes. Not just by strength. He tries to use an animal that, he, that can help him communicate the level and the order of strength we must have to finish. An ox is a strange animal. It's a farm animal. It's a very, very... When, when you see an ox, really, ox is not a very nice animal. When you come close to it, it even smells. An ox has no business with his physical outlook. All an ox is concerned about is labor. The vision that is set before it. An ox literally can drive a cart or a farm, a farm um, object through the farm. Through mountains, valleys, it will still push it. It gets to a point where it hooks and you will see it breathing. Uh, 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 and you think it's about to finish and it will push it again and continue until it crosses over the mountain. And the Bible says, if you must stand and finish strong, you must sustain strength like an ox. That animal that communicates resilience. That at the point where your humanity catches up with you. Like Job while you are crying with the boils. While you've lost everything. You can say though he slay me. Yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time, I know that there is whatever has a beginning has an end. If this issue has a beginning, it has an end. I sustain strength to continue. A time comes when it looks like members are leaving your church. Members are leaving your ministry. Ministry is not growing. You are praying for the sick. And it's as if the anointing does not seem to find expression. And this thing is destroying you. He says, by the strength, of an ox an ox is the animal that even if it cannot move forward it doesn't go back again it stands there until rescue comes to it very strong animal many Christians many many Christians I have seen this thing I've seen it like I'm seeing your face that in I'm talking of a few years because of the unfolding of the culmination of this phase of the move of God and that which is starting. Not many people will be able to stand the kinds of persecutions that will come in the church. 
will come on individuals. There are many men of God who will literally quit ministry. There are many women who will divorce their husbands because they are pastors and whatever. Because of financial hardship that comes upon people. I prophesied in 2007 about the recession that will start. People laughed at me. People criticized me. When it hit, I said, I saw another one coming. That's not the only one coming. And brothers and sisters, when this tsunami hits and the earth begins to burn like an oven, you will see compromises of all sorts. Men who would never have bribe will bribe. Ladies who will, who will say, me, I have to marry a man of, somebody who loves God, will now say, anyhow, please, salvage us. There are many ministries that will go through seasons of shakings. There are many men of God, men of God who you had never had issues about, men of God who were not even known for scandals. You will begin to hear things. Now, whether it's false or real is not the issue, is that it is there. You will see great men, fathers of faith, who will, it's, it's almost like they are almost being brought on their knees. Some of them will be accused directly by governmental authorities. Some of them will be linked to corruption. I'm telling you this, write it down. Some of them will be linked as they are pointing out people who are corrupt. They will link their churches and their membership to certain kinds of corruption. And the devil will orchestrate it such that they will be indicted in diverse ways. But it will take the strength of an ox. Some of their own members will write articles about them. And destroy them. And tear them down. Some of them will finally vent out their suspicions. But beyond this mountain of pain will come a move of the Spirit and the excellency of His glory upon the church in unprecedented dimensions and especially the church in Nigeria. Every church called upon by God will go through this season. I guarantee you. It's not something you will pray against. It's something you will receive strength. Listen. Not every cup in the kingdom can be pushed away. There are certain cups you only receive grace to drink them. He said, I want to sit by your left and right. And he said, are you willing to be baptized with my baptism and to drink of my cup? This is a very scary teaching tonight. See the way people are quiet. I said, why did I come for Koinonia today? He says, by the strength of an ox. I see this thing happening to men. Many men. I saw it in the visions of the Lord. Fathers who had been faithful for many years now started being unfaithful to their wives. That's what the Bible says. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of self. I saw a lot of pastors who got into drinking. Drinking and smoking. I saw pastors getting into drugs. And I said, my goodness, not just drugs to satisfy themselves, drug as business. Because the financial pressure of ministry was coming upon them. I saw people slaughtering babies. Babies. Even the young men will be wary. They will fall. You who used to love God, you had all kinds of ambitions. You have gathered people and say, God, say we should start a church. You just gas out and sit and say, this thing, is it worth it? Is it not better for me? Is it not better for me to just sit quietly? There are times many of you will blame God for anointing you. You will literally blame God and say, Lord, I was minding my own business. What is all this one? Like Amos, I was just an ordinary farmer. You now came and called me, oh, I didn't tell you I wanted ministry. strength we are in the seasons where this will begin to happen i saw a release of strange arsenals from hell i saw them flooding into nigeria like bees like black bees spreading it's like they had been kept for a time as this see when when i tell you these things i want you to know that my heart is heavy as i say it i wish i didn't have to say it but it's the truth 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. So many things. Many believers will say, where is our God? Many people whose Christianity is not founded on love for God will leave God. They will leave God in, in unbelievable ways. They will turn their backs directly on God. Brothers and sisters, when you begin to see this, it has already started happening for many of you. There are three phases that this will happen in. Number one is individuals. Number two is maybe churches or groups or territories. And then number three, nations and continents. We will see this thing. It's the birth pain of a new revival. It's like a woman who is in a labor room. Never allow the assignments of hell to prevail over you. Please hear me. I speak to you prophetically. Those seasons will come in your life. Believe me. You will thank me for this when the seasons come. It will look like everything you have believed is under fire. It will look like everything you have read about is a lie. Some of you will stand and almost feel like committing suicide. It's already happening to some of you. I want you to know that there are birth pains of a new dimension. And it is not a time to give up. Do not let your humanity swallow you for just beyond it. Joseph was almost giving up. And by the next day, he was the prime minister. God is counting on us for strength. God is counting on us. Many of you will walk alone. Listen, some of you who are used to group endorsements, oh, endorse me. For some of you, it will be a lonely road. Believe me, you will walk alone. Some of you, your parents will look at you and insult you. They will say, you are good for nothing. You are, you are a disgrace to me. I gave birth to you. Look at what other children are doing. The more you claim you are spiritual, the more you are failing in life. I'm ashamed of you. And you will walk in that lonely path. You will discuss things with your friends that they will use against you and stab you to your back and say, I did it. At that point, you will almost not want to trust anybody again. But I'm telling you this, sustain capacity in the spirit. Those days will come. They are here already. I have seen them. Satan is out on a mission to discredit ministries and men of God. I, I saw like it was like bees that were released like a swamp of bees. You will not imagine the levels of discrediting that Satan wants to bring to ministries. Why? So that their voice will no longer be heard. And then the people will be depraved. The Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of the Lord was scarce. That's what Satan wants. That there be no abundance of the word again. Listen. I want you to know that your spiritual life is annoying the gates of hell. Don't you think your prayers in the night is a welcome development to hell? They want to ravage your family. But every time they want to step in, there is a voice that cries at the gates of heaven in the night. When God wants to make it look like every prophet is fake, there are already prophetic people that God is raising. And Satan has spotted them. He has seen it. He tried to destroy your, your preparation. But since you did, not, you did not stop, then he will now begin to move in strange ways. He says, by the strength of an ox. Listen, I tell you this. Churches will be scandalized in mysterious ways. Men of God will fall victims of women in mysterious ways. That's why I talk to some of us who are jealous over women. Be careful. Don't just laugh around and, and say anything goes. Be careful. It's good to be social. But the Bible says, be wise as serpents. He said, but be gentle as doves. Those who speak anyhow, carelessly talking anyhow there are men of god that run their mouth anyhow don't give satan an arsenal to strike you but i see this thing happening i see it happening it's like an angel of death that is passing over 
and only those who are immune will stand. I bring you this word from the throne. This is a word to the body of Christ. When the Lord showed me this, I said, my goodness. But beyond it, brothers and sisters, I saw an emergence of strange glory. Listen. I saw people coming out with tears in their eyes, but heavy levels of unction. Mm. I saw women coming. A lot of people, some with bruises on their body like blood. But I saw again they were holding mantles. Like a cloak. Mantles. I saw others who had already crossed over. But they told people to hold their mantles and they went back into the fire to help other people. They had come out, but willingly they left it. I saw this happen. I saw families turn away from people. Families turn away from their children. I saw children turn away from people. I said, what is happening? Is the manifestation of these spirits. Is the birth pain of a revival. Everything that can be used against you will be used. Everything. Everything that can be used against you will be used. The gates of hell will release his arsenals everywhere. There are certain things you cannot stop, but you must build momentum. The Bible says, and the rains came, and the wind blew, but the house that was built on the rock stood. I lift my hands to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you, awesome God. One more time, sing it from your heart. I lift my voice to you, you're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you, awesome God. Hear me, when these seasons come, strength and capacity is what will take men through. There are times you may not be able to pray, but make sure you stay. There are times you can't explain to anybody, make sure you stay. When your ego is stung to the core, when all you have held leaves you, stand. Haven't done all to stand. He says, stand. 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 When your gift and the ability of the Spirit upon your life is no longer appreciated, stand. When your loved ones who used to believe in you now turn and say, look, we even doubt if you are anointed. Stand. 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 Hear the voice of the Spirit tonight. Stand. Haven't done all to stand. 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 It will cost you. You will have scars. But stand. He's the awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. He's the awesome God, awesome God, awesome God. You are the awesome God. This is how the miracle working power will come to the church. This is how signs and wonders will be restored to the body.
This is how the prophetic will be restored. Will be restored. This is the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry. The capacity to stand. Stand. You will listen to this message a thousand times. I promise you. I say it to go ahead of you. A day will come. No other message will minister to you. You will hear this voice speaking in your dreams. You will hear it speaking in your visions. When you are about to give, give up, you will hear stand. Mm. Stand. 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 He said, fear not. Isaiah 43. I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the river, it shall not overwhelm you. He says, when you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you. You want grace? This is the way it comes. You want power? I'm not just talking of trying to say, I'm anointed. No. He said, let no man trouble me. I went through it. There is a scar. Brothers and sisters, not every man speaks and heaven begins to back them like this. There are scars. Preachers lie to you. They tell you there are no scars. But I want you to hear this voice from the throne. It takes scars to command power in the spirit. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God, awesome God, the faithful God, you're the faithful God, faithful God, mighty God, is the mighty God, mighty God, glorious God. Hey. You're the glorious God, glorious God. We lift our voice to you. You're the awesome God. We lift our hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Hallelujah. There are rankings and there are promotions in the spirit. Hear me. When a man enters a new level of grace, you know. When a man touches a substance that is heavenly, you know. God is elevating men through these persecutions. But it's not going to come the way you expect. It won't come by clapping for you. No! Your voice becomes like the voice of thunder. When you have gained power in the heavens. He's the awesome God. Awesome God, you are the awesome God. Hey, awesome God, I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands. Awesome God. Hallelujah. Though weeping endures for a night, it says joy. Though weeping endures for a night, joy. With the morning, it will look like morning will not come. 
stand in the fire stand in the heat stand through the persecution stand through the pain stand is the betting of the anointing is the betting of power is the betting of glory for out of the shadows of your pain his glory will arise out of your tears an unction will come upon your life out of your discouragement out of your humanity he that endures to the end you may not be able to sing but stand you may not be able to cry but stand you may not be able to pray but stand you may not be able to listen to any message you will call on friends they will run away from you you will call on family members they will run away from you but stand 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 is a threshing floor in the spirit is a white press in the spirit the anointing is rising from that pain the anointing power in the spirit unction grace a message an apostolic and prophetic mantle will be your reward when you endure I lift my head to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my voice to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. Listen. Many people will criticize what I have told you now. Many people will say, forget about him. But I stand before the God whom I serve. And I tell you, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare down upon the mountain top. I've gone through my own. For many people, you are in your seasons. Others, yours is to come. This message is ministering to certain people right now. Some of you, it is memory because you are past that level. For some people, it's strange because it will not minister to you until that door. In one minute, I'd like you to lift your voice. And say, Father, strength for the days ahead. Pray. Strength. Strength for the days ahead. Are you praying, Koinonia? Strength. Barada balada bala koto pros koto bariara balada ba. Shaga da balada ba, shaga da balada ba, shaga da balada ba. Le na na mari na 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 na. Raba shaga da balada ba, shoto preka da balada ba. Oh Lord, we draw strength from the throne. Shaka da balada mari na balada ba, shaka da preka da balada ba. Le na na mari na mas ka mari na balada da. Shata balada balada da. Rekete te te. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord never told you, you will not go through storms. But he said, I will be with you. Hear this as a word of comfort. When all else fails, know that he is with you. I will be with you. 
where you have no voice, call on him. Wait on him. Don't trivialize his presence. He's not one of many things. You will soon see that any other thing that is not him can truly not help you. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, hold my hands. Don't leave me alone. I know that there is a burden. I know that there is an anointing. But Lord, between where I am to the place of that anointing, hold my hands. That when I want to give up, let me feel your warmth. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and declare and tell the Lord my love for you is unbending. It doesn't matter what I go through. Lift your voice and pray. Solidify your commitment. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, oh God. I love you. Through the storms, I still love you. My family may be having challenges, but I love you. There are situations around my life and my family that I cannot explain, but I love you. I love you. When I have no words to say, know that I love you. When I have nowhere to run to, know that I love you. When I have no one to talk to, know that I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, everybody, keep standing because I have to, I'm going to pray for us. So, this is important. Make sure. You are sensitive. I'm going to take two altar calls very quickly. The first set of people, I want them to stand here. The second set, I want them to stand here. Now, there are people who have never truly made up their hearts, their minds, their spirits to commit themselves to God. You've never given your life to Christ. Or you found yourself, please don't play games. Tonight is not the night to play games. There are people inside and outside as far as my eyes can see. You need Jesus tonight and say, Lord, for the days that are ahead, you are the anchor that I need. You need to make your ways right with Jesus. You need to rededicate your life to Christ or come to him the first time. Inside and outside, make your way right here. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person to come. Please, if they are coming, clear the way for them to come. There are people God is speaking to right now. Come this side. Come this side. Don't be ashamed. Just turn and, and face me, but this side. God bless you as you are coming. As you hear the voice of the Spirit tonight, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus said, whoever will come to me and will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. Now, please, the second set of people, I don't want you to be emotional about this. I'm praying for everybody. Please. This is not for everybody. 
this is not for everybody. Please, make sure you understand what I say before you come out. There are people right now, you sense you are in a season of intense spiritual warfare. It's like there is an attack. You see it. I'm not talking of demons just trying to oppress you. You know that there is a fight for your grace. It's like there is a contention in hell. Please come and stand here. I want to agree with you. You need strength. You need strength. My goodness. Hold on. If there are so many people... Ah. Okay, let's, let's see how you can just stand this side. Please, don't just be emotional. It doesn't mean if you don't come out there... there the devil is out to attack people, but there are people, you, it's like a season. It's like a season. Inexplainable events in your life. Awesome. There are pastors under attack. There are ministries under fire they cannot explain. There are businesses under attack. There are anointings and graces under intense attack. He's fighting you for your gift. Don't worry, if there's no room, just stand there. Those of you who are giving your life to Christ, just lift your hands and I will pray for you and rededicating your life. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed at all. I want you to say after me, Father, I love you with all my heart. I've heard your word tonight. And I rededicate my life unto the service of the king. This night, I declare that I am for Jesus forever. I love him with all my heart. And I will not return to my own life again. I belong to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive eternal life into my spirit. All right, keep standing. I will join you with the other people. Listen, guys, this attack is not about you. If you do not understand it, you will hate the individuals that the devil is using. There are some of you, as you are standing here, there are people fighting you. Some of them are your loved ones. Some of them are people you have helped before. Some of them are people you wipe their tears. Some of you, your churches are under attack. Your fellowships, you see it in your dreams. There is just something in your spirit that tells you, look, I'm entering a season of fire. You can't tell. Some of you, it does not happen yet. I'm praying strength for you. Listen, I know what it looks like. You cannot imagine. I know what it means to get to that season. I'm preparing you ahead. Awesome. Lift your hands and let me pray for you. What you need is a, it's a supply of strength from the throne. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Mm. Lord Jesus, let there be from the throne strength, strength, endurance. Like an ox, may you stand through the storm. I supply upon you the power of the Spirit, strength, that when men are giving up, you will stand. When you have no songs, may you stand. May you stand. May you stand the criticisms. May you stand the discrediting. May you stand the blackmails. May you stand the misunderstandings haven't done all to stand I supply power to you stand stand I pray for every family represented here that is going through this season there are families that are going through this season everything that used to work is no longer working people are fired from their jobs mysteriously Oh God of heaven, let there be a supply of strength. You told me to impart strength upon your people. And Lord, I impart that strength. You who has kept me through all the storms and the rain in my life. You who has kept this ministry through all the storms and the rain. Keep your people, oh God. Strength. 
that in the midst of your tears you still stand strength in the name of Jesus Christ and I speak against the forces that have been released from hell this is for everybody now I'm praying I saw it an arsenal of powers from darkness don't say it does not concern you believe me my God I pray let there be a rod of judgment a rod of judgment a rod of judgment in the name of Jesus Christ where your people do not have voices to defend themselves. My God and my King defend them. Where their families cannot speak, speak for them. Where they have no strength to run, carry them upon your wings, O oh God. Satan, I speak to you. And I speak to every force of darkness. That your people and their gimmicks will not prevail. The forces of demons and the forces of men alike will not stand against the agenda of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare upon you that every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, may they be condemned. In the name of Jesus, in your time of need, I raise helpers for you. Men who will speak for you in high places. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you find places of refuge. That you will not run without a place of refuge. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. That beyond the shadows of your today, let there be an emergence of strange glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as a family of faith, Lord, we declare. There is a spiritual fortification upon this ministry. There is a spiritual border that protects the hand of God upon this ministry. And we enforce it in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone who is connected here and belongs to this spiritual tribe, we declare in the name of Jesus that at the end of it you will stand strong. We also pray for all the churches around this city. Every church, oh God, and every fellowship in Zaria. Every church, oh God, and every fellowship in Kaduna State. We pray for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that in this season, let your church stand. In the name of Jesus, we pray for all the men and the women of God in this city and in this nation, young and old, fathers and sons alike. My God, I pray that capacity will come upon your church to stand. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that Dagon that tries to exalt itself and defy the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we judge you. We speak to these spirits that have been released. Zaria becomes an uncomfortable place for you. The same way Ebola was driven out of this nation, we drive those spirits and their agenda. In the name of Jesus Christ. We speak from the realm of the spirit. We silence the plots of witchcraft. The plots of necromancy. Those who want to invoke the constellations. To work against the body of Christ. I stand under this apostolic anointing. And we fortify our spiritual borders. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ. That this city is strong. That the church in Nigeria is strong. That our families are strong.
and that you as a person you are let's lift our hands and bless his name lord we wait on you tonight shiba katala baba la 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 lift your hands lift your voice and begin to bless him bless his name bless him in the spirit Lord, we wait, we wait for the rain. Bless him, lift your hands and bless him in the spirit. Lord, we bless you. For fire. Go ahead and sing in the spirit, make melodies. Yeah, of the rain.
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we invoke the spirit that has filled our history with revival. The same spirit that moved upon the city of Wales. You used Evan Roberts and you did mighty things in that city. You moved upon a street called Azusa. And a wide-eyed evangelist called William Seymour came under the influence of this mighty presence. And you led the Pentecostal movement. You came upon women like Jeffrey Pullman, Empty Semple McFarland, Maria Woodward Eater, and they shook their generations to a steel. You came upon Alexander Dewey and a frail cobbler called Smith Wigglesworth. You came upon Madame Gudion. The spirit of the age to come. We invoke that spirit in this season of the rain. Set us ablaze. Let the rain pour. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit. Let there be an outpouring of miracles and signs and wonders. It shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams upon the maids i will also pour out my spirit i will show forth wonders in the heavens and signs in the earth blood fire and smoke this is that oh god that joel prophesied about we are in that season of the rain let there be an outpouring, oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. Open up the fountains of the deep and cause the rain to come upon your people. We are in that season. Ask ye for the rain in the time of the latter rain. We ask. This is the season of signs and wonders. The season of the manifestation of suns. The season of miracles. The season of the emergence of ambassadors, envoys of his majesty, the salt of the earth, the light of the world, champions, apostles and prophets, men of fire. Oh, let that army arise. Let that army arise. A mighty army. The fire divorced before them. Behind them a desolate wilderness. They shall leap upon walls. They shall run like chariots. Men who fear no evil. The fire will not burn them. But they will consume everything before them. Therefore we blow the trumpet in Zion. And we sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. We declare that this is that season. This is that time. This is that moment in prophecy. We are the generation that seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, arise, so oh mighty man, and empower your army for this season.
Take it higher. Give me a visitation tonight. It's our year of the rain. My goodness. Give me a visitation. You will catch fire. This is the year you will catch fire. It's a rain that brings fire. It's a rain that makes you an inferno. Pray and say, Lord, I make a demand. I ask for the rain. tonight don't be distracted don't be distracted Hallelujah. Hallelujah. listen to me I am absolutely convinced hear me that every one of us here represents a sphere of influence. Every one of us here represents a jurisdiction of dominion. And so this is a summit. It's, it's a conversion of kings. 
is a convergence of ambassadors so as you travel you travel for your sphere of influence as you pray you pray for they that are tied to your grace don't see yourself as a single entity for when they looked at the womb of rebecca they saw that they were two nations not just twins two nations we each represent territories dimensions of spiritual operation that the nations will benefit from and so when you cry you cry on behalf of eternity when you travel you travel on behalf of the family on behalf of the community lord we love you We love you. We thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Honestly, let me tell you something. We're not ready for what God has in store for us this year. We think we are, but I don't think we're ready. Because God is going to move this year in most dramatic proportions. You will see ordinary men turn into things that will make you wonder. And this is not some spiritual things. Physically, you will see men that will walk like gods in this city, across this nation. All God is asking is, do you believe? Do you believe? He said, blessed is she that believes. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance of those things that have been spoken. Unto her. Lord, we believe. Let the rain fall without restriction. We empty ourselves and we empty our vessels. Hallelujah. We ask you to help us tonight. Spirit of the living God, we submit to you. Unveil the mysteries of the kingdom. Teach us truths that are older than us. Teach us what made the ancient powerful. Open us up to ancient vistas in the spirit. Show us realities that predate our dispensation. Grant us access to abilities and dimensions in the spirit. Show us the ancient path. Oh, that we will step into the Sabbath. Grant us grace. For there is a longing in our spirit. There is a longing upon our generation to experience a fresh dimension of the reality of the spirit and we trust you to bring us into this reality in the name of jesus christ praise the lord god bless you please be seated you're welcome just sit quietly pick up your writing materials there is a lot to do tonight please no let no seat be vacant there are so many people we can get some of the people to occupy the seats some of them are the extreme overflows if they can come and at least stand inside there are people under the anointing ushers i know that you it's a season of the rain we will step into realities this year we will step into strange dimensions of grace and the lord will grant it so in the name of jesus christ you will step into levels of realities that will change your physical form your physical form that will alter you when moses stood in the glory he did not know that he was being changed after 40 days he stepped out and his skin his flesh his physical flesh it's, it's not just about using cream and all of that there is a level of glory 
I'm telling you, I want you to believe this. God is not playing games with us. If we mean business with him, he says, who has believed our report? Who has believed? You will see mountains melt as if they never existed. That's what happens when the glory of the Lord comes. You will see God turn around situations. He said, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. I want every meeting that we come for all through this year, you must be very intentional about it. You must be very definite about it. Hallelujah. You can greet and play around after the service. But the moment you step into this building, before the meeting starts, I want you to know that you are standing upon Mount Zion. And anything, just anything can happen. Hallelujah. That's what God wants to do. Let it cover all the earth. Oh, that's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. That's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the rain of His Spirit cover us. Let it cover all. I wrote this song years ago from my spirit. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Lord, cover us with your glory. Even tonight. Bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The reality of spiritual laws. The reality of spiritual laws. The reality of spiritual laws. What we'll be learning tonight will be so powerful. So powerful. My goal for us this year is that we will become so powerful men and women of extreme spiritual power and it will happen as we are shown the keys of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom listen let me tell you something for years for years there has been a cry in my spirit somehow there is a testimony in my spirit that our generation has lost touch with ancient realities. You hear me use that word again and again. People move forward, but something in my spirit keeps drawing me back. And it says if you can go back enough, you will find something we lost. Hallelujah. I've been intrigued every time I read things in scripture and it talks about ancient things. There is something that the ancient knew. It's not supposed to be so difficult. We have lost touch with the dimension of reality. Carnality, flesh, intercourse with Babylon, cut short a flow of spiritual reality. And the Lord told me something last year. He said, mantles do not leave the earth to heaven. That means every dimension of grace that has ever been displaced in the earth, they are archived in certain dimensions here in the earth realm. And if we can trust the ministry of the Holy Spirit, He will navigate us to those parts. And we will collide with these ancient mantles. And we will do strange things upon the surface of this earth. You believe that? And this is our journey. Show us great things, O oh God. The reality of spiritual laws. Aside from revealing the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ, 
one of the cardinal areas of my call is to teach the body of Christ the principles of the kingdom to unveil to the body of Christ that dominion is a resultant effect of the knowledge and the comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom a mystery is a hidden truth that requires the agency of the spirit or another spirit that is not of this realm to open an individual to the reality it's called a mystery mysteries the occultic realm operate on the strength of mysteries coded operations that are shrouded in mysteries science cannot explain it it takes your fraternity with another spirit to open you up to those dimensions and so he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there is the word a man and a man knowing his wife it has been given to you to come into a union with the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah if we ever will attain to that stature of spiritual authority where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom then i want you to know that it will never just be by impartation it will never just be by stories it will stand upon the strength of something that we know what did job know that turned his financial predicament in a moment the Bible did not tell us what business he did. The Bible just said Job prayed for his friends. Mysteriously, people started coming from everywhere. Brothers and sisters, are there portals we have lost in the spirit? Have we not lost touch with certain dimensions of spiritual reality? Hallelujah. The prophet said, bring me a mystery. Who taught him? Who lectured him? How did he know? He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart. My heart is indicting a good matter. He said, yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Who taught this man? Who taught the psalmist that praise was a garment that a man can wear? He called it a garment. Not an attitude of praise. A garment of praise. Every time they praise God in the place of war, I notice they use a coded language. All they said was, for he is good and his mercy endures. It was not any kind of praise. There was a time. It was like a spiritual code. Every time they began to say, for he is good and his mercy endures, he rose as a man of war. Meaning not every word invokes every dimension. There is a kind of language that makes God to operate in a certain way. Are you learning something? Help us, oh God. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. Part of my resolutions this year is that I will open us up to deep things. Some of us will be afraid of some of the things we'll be learning. I've been praying and say, Lord, prepare your people. Because it will rattle the, the foundation of what you know to be Christianity and you will know that many preachers have lied to us hallelujah so let's prepare our hearts because this thing is not the exclusive reserve of one man it has nothing to do with the boasting of a preacher let me tell you something the hallmark of an apostolic ministry, I will keep saying it till we understand, is not just miracles and signs and wonders and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. There is a dimension of that, right? But the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry is the ability to receive the revelation that is meant for a dispensation. To understand it and communicate it accurately to the people of God because the apostolic ministry is dispensational are you following me now and the knowledge of God is also dispensational meaning there is a curriculum there is a scope of understanding that God expects a dispensation to know are you following me now so that what we call eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations every dispensation coming with a revelation of god and adding that revelation to another dispensation 
Are you following me now? And that means that our dispensation has certain dimensions of God that we must know and we must touch. But it takes the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. Not just to do signs and wonders and to lay hands and heal the sick. That is important. But to be able to sustain a posture in the spirit such that we can receive these spiritual realities, understand them and interpret them to God's people. And then they will be able to walk in this path and you will see certain possibilities in our lives. Hallelujah. And this is what we aim to do in this place. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The reality of spiritual laws. Science has taught us that there are laws that govern this earth realm. They teach us in physics and, and chemistry and other aspects of science that there are laws. And scientists have been able to come into the recognition of certain physical laws. And they have been able to account for the explanation of certain tragedies that have happened to men. Hallelujah. Over time, scientists began to inquire as to why men will encounter certain inexplainable tragedies. And they later discovered that there were laws that were being violated unconsciously. That you do not recognize that there is a law does not mean it's not there. Are you following me now? Praise the Lord. If a child does not know there is gravity and he jumps on a, a, an altitude like this, the child will fall. Gravity will not say, I excuse you. Is that true? There are many other laws. Now, I want you to know that the same way spiritual laws govern this physical, physical laws, sorry, govern this realm. There are spiritual laws that govern the operation of the spirit. Hallelujah. You are able to walk very well when you can master the laws physically. None of us will find ourselves walking against gravity, for instance. And if by any means you are to walk against gravity, you know what to do to be able to remedy the, the imbalance that you are creating. And so you do not find yourself fighting the laws of nature. Gravity, for instance. Friction, for instance. All of these are laws. I want you to know that there are spiritual laws. Say spiritual laws. Many people have been able to find these laws and walk with these principles. And they have been able to do mind-bogging things in the earth realm. And as we explore this reality, my goal tonight is not so much to share what the laws are as it is to bring us into a recognition that as scattered as spiritual things look, as scattered as the earth is, there is a rhythm. Are you getting my point? There is an exact synergy. There is a sequence. There is an equation of the happening of things. They are not as haphazard as we think. There is a level of order and accuracy. God designed the earth. It is our inaccurate understanding or total ignorance to his principles that has resulted to certain levels of setbacks and limitations in our lives. And in this year of the rain, God wants to open us up to a recognition of certain principles. And you will find out that what has grounded you for years, you will walk cheaply. You will now find out that the, the enemy that many of us has been, have been talking about, they are not necessarily the demons out there. Our ignorance, our lack of understanding the laws of God. Say amen. The key to kingdom dominion, please write this down. The key to dominion, the key to influence, the key to power, the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom. I'll repeat it again. Please make sure you are writing something. Or at least jotting something on your notepad or so on, on the phone or so. The key to kingdom dominion, the key to influence, 
influence is the capacity to alter people's mindsets the key to power the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom there are ancient laws encapsulated in this bible there are laws that are older than us there are laws that predate our dispensation they have been responsible for the rise and the fall of kings they have been responsible for the rise and fall of champions and when we find peace with these laws we will do big things for the kingdom we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words ancient words ever true changing me and changing we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient personalize it say i have come with an open heart i have come with open hearts oh let Daniel chapter 19. Let's begin our journey so that we can pray. We have come We have come oh, let me Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22 Mandi blako shi prahata kosi baladaba The story of a cruel king who slept and had a dream forgot the dream and forgot the interpretation and was mounting pressure upon all his wise men and cabinets and daniel said give us time and the bible says he asked for wisdom and in the night can we read together verse 19 one to read then was the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision then daniel blessed the god of heaven verse 20 Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. 21. He, he changed the times and seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. He said, Then was the secret revealed. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, secrets can be revealed. Not everything is known by every Christian. Are you hearing me? The Bible says the secret things of the Lord are not just with Christians, they are with them that fear him, and he will reveal his covenants, he will show them. His covenants there are mysteries in our world there are secrets that have been archived in the bowels of the spirit and it takes men who can press to say Lord open my eyes show me the secrets that's why all things are not possible for everybody is that true Kentucky fried chicken one of the great eateries around um, they have a secret recipe that till today has not been revealed. Is that true? That secret recipe is what makes them unique. Coca-Cola, till today, they have not revealed the exact formula and combination. Great 
men dwell upon the strength of secrets. In ancient time, it was a taboo to reveal the deepest of secrets. They were known only by the king and his envoys, those we call knights or apostles. They were the highest representatives of the king. They knew where treasures were hidden in castles. They knew secret places of escape in chambers. When, when they came to defeat a nation, they knew how to, to invoke the powers of those territories to fight on their behalf. It was an access that was given to them. And so as his ambassadors, God wants to show us. He doesn't want to hide anything from us. He said, come, let us reason together. I want to show you how I operate the heavens so that you can draw from this and do wonders in the earth. If you believe that, say amen. So spiritual laws are real. The spirit realm is a real realm of existence. Just like the physical realm. It is only a lot more superior to this realm. This realm is bounded by many things. There are limitations. For instance, this realm is purely three-dimensional. But in the realm of the spirit, there are many dimensions. A lot of people have preached that there are four dimensions, five. I don't believe that. I believe that there are infinite dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Because the possibilities in the spirit are defined by what dimension you can function. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I want us to know that the spirit realm is real. The spirit realm is real. And there is a constant interaction between the spirit realm and this realm. Every single one of us under the sound of my voice and those following us online, every single one under the sound of my voice interacts with the spirit realm every time. Whether you recognize it or not. The condition to, to interact with the spirit realm is just to be alive. Remember I began the teaching last week showing us the five elements. Right? The elements of creation. We drink water. Is that true? We breathe air. Why don't we breathe dust? We breathe air to live. Air that seems to be immaterial. But we breathe it in our material body to keep us alive. So, our biological composition is, is, a, is a, 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 an intertwining of both this realm and the realm of the spirit. Prosperity is an intertwining of the spirit realm and this realm. Success in life is an intertwining of the realm of the spirit and this realm. The anointing, the ability and the agency of the spirit... When a man stands and you look at somebody with cancer and stretch your physical hand, you may not even make contact with the person and the person starts shaking or the person falls. It tells you that there is something more than what your eyes see. There is an interaction. Is that true? Watch this. I'm speaking to you. There is no, di there is no digital connection between my mouth and your heart. But what I am saying is passing through your ears and it has the ability to influence your paradigm because they are spirit and life hallelujah so we must we must rise to this reality that all we see in our world brothers and sisters is not all there is praise the lord all we see is not all there is there is more say there is more in this building right now, inside and outside, there are more angels than this crowd gathered here. And many of them are doing many things as I teach right now. Some are imparting graces and all of these things, right? Walking in partnership with the Spirit. And they are not only angels, there are also the spirits of just men made perfect. Testifying. Like the witnesses that stood with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. Elijah and Moses. Representing the law and the prophet. They are not the only witnesses. There are many others. Enoch, for instance. Right? Many other people. 
So the Bible says, ye are come unto Mount Zion. And it begins to tell us all the things that happen in that place. Listen, the earlier you realize that life is entirely spiritual, that the physical manifestation is only a little portion. Hallelujah. Occultists understand this. Politicians understand this. Is that true? I was, I was studying the world religion. I'll give you a few statistics as we progress. Very shocking. I didn't know there was that much religion in the whole world. I thought there were just maybe 100 or 1,000. I will tell you the figure shortly. <laughs> and all these religions have followers. Ardent, committed, die-hard followers. Meaning the spirit of man is searching for something. Searching for a connection with its source. Somehow, mankind knows that until you interact with this, the spirit realm, there is no stability to your person. There is a longing. So we pray to a deity we call different names for many religions. And we hope that somebody out there of a higher consciousness is listening to us. There are spiritual laws. The same way I can violate gravity and violate other laws and reap the consequences of my disobedience or ignorance. That is the same way I can stumble into a spiritual law I do not know and activate its operation unconsciously and suddenly begin to see certain things manifest physically. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then on the other hand, I can deactivate the operation of a spiritual law without knowing and begin to receive a ripple effect in the physical. Are you following me now? So it seems to me like the journey of many Christians is, is, is a blind dashing into spiritual laws. We are not exactly sure. Sometimes we touch something that activates prosperity. And ha has that happened to you? For weeks you find out that favor is coming. Everything is happening. And then it's like something happens. And it's short. There are times that you find out that everything you say in prayer comes to pass. And then other times you pray and it's as if you are talking to yourself. Hallelujah. There are times you suddenly step into a dimension and seasons and you are having dreams every night. And everything you see is coming to pass. And then certain times. What is responsible for this opening and closing of the gates of the spirit? This is what I want to teach you. The reality of spiritual things. Even for preachers, there are times you stand to preach and you sense an unusual open heavens. You are just ministering and my goodness. Scriptures that you, you read years ago that you cannot even quote normally suddenly come to your mind and you are quoting them verbatim. And other times it looks like you stand and you are wondering, I hope I'm not messing up. Listen, if you get what I'm teaching you, you will keep certain portals of the spirit open perpetually. Hallelujah. Certain people have touched this realm in different forms. Hallelujah. Now watch this. The fundamental principle I want us to understand as we explore this very sensitive teaching. Because what I'm going to be saying will rattle many of us. Hallelujah. Some of the things that I'm going to be saying will challenge us. But I want you to follow me. The fundamental principle I want you to have at the back of your mind is that everything created belongs to God. You will see the advantage of this statement as we progress. Everything created belongs to God. Secondly, all power belongs to God. Hallelujah. All power. Psalm 62 verse 11, please, quickly. Psalm 62 verse 11. It says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power everybody shout all power all power you went to school what is your understanding of all power meaning if there is any performance that ever occurs 
any manifestation of the supernatural in the earth to any degree was either a release or a corruption of power that came from God. Please follow me. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Look up please. When a magician takes a white handkerchief, please follow me tonight, and waves it and brings out a dove out of it, what happened? What happened? Hallelujah. When a magician slices himself into half and holds the remaining half of him and is walking and bastardizes your knowledge of physics and biology, what exactly is happening? Listen to me. He said, once have I spoken. Twice. In other words, I emphasize it as a witness. That all power belongs to God. That means the central force in the realm of the spirit is not astrology. It's not the constellation. The seat of power in the spirit is God himself. Just follow me. Every religion is the hybrid of a man's pursuit to uncover and look for this mystery entity that we call God. And over time, what has happened is, listen, fallen angels. You know, I spoke to you about the pre-Adamite dispensation. We spoke a bit about that, right? Realities that predate Genesis 1. You find that in Job 38, right? The creation, we spoke a bit now, last year, this year, the creation of angels and all of these things right now watch this let me show you a few mysteries in the bible have you read in your bible that stars fought for a woman called deborah question was she an unbeliever <laughs> have you had that thing that stars fought for deborah have you had people mention statements like you were born with 10 stars eh? whether you believe it or not just follow me I'm not teaching you Scientology. I'm provoking you to be mature. Just listen to me. Are you following me now? Many of us come from different cultural backgrounds. Where at one point or the other, they have brought somebody to your house. Hello? Baba? Mama? Whatever. They shall brought somebody to your house. And he was able to do certain things. Whether he used cola or not. Whether he used whatever. And he began to unveil certain things. Either reveal the person that stole. Is that true? Stole money or meat or lied. Is that true? And then he began to reveal some things. How many of you have seen people who are not born again? They have never given their life to Christ. Yet they have functioned in what you know to be word of knowledge. Is that true? In certain tribes, they call them those whose head has opened. Is that true? People who can see beyond certain things. Listen. God has spoken once. Let it be known to you that when it comes to the realm of the spirit, there are not many forces. There is one force. Everything revolves around him. His name is God Almighty. Whether we accept to call him God Almighty or not. Are you getting my point now? Hmm. So how come Satan can manipulate power how come traditional rulers can manipulate power please follow me how come a man can look at this lady and say look um you will not give birth case closed he didn't ask her whether she had faith or not he just spoke on the strength of something he has been taught is that true how come people read magical books huh all kinds of books they tell them recite this and the moment they recite it things start happening brothers and sisters am i telling a lie or pastors have been afraid of confronting this issue because if we don't many of us will not know when we have entered witchcraft if all power belongs to god then whose power are witches using follow me if all power belongs to God, then the religions that can turn, there, there, there's the video of a young guy that walked upon water, 
physically he walked upon it huh he walked upon a building sideways and came down no pastor has done that at least i only know one bold pastor who decided is he was prophet daniel the one that lions tore him into pieces in the bad that's the closest thing that i know but the bible says once have i spoken twice that all so is it that god gave it to these demons no think about it go to zaria city and meet somebody and say i want a husband what's that thing that they carry love portion wealth portion all kinds of of things they give you and one young man is just moving and they blow something towards him he becomes absolutely confused right and starts pursuing a lady helplessly until she does whatever she wants to do with it now think about that if the bible is telling the truth that all power belongs to god i have a question by the way it will interest you to know that there are 4200 religions as of today in the world how many 4200 registered all the 4200 religions where did they get their power from satan does not create anything is that clear do we all agree question was god sleeping did they steal some of the power without his seeing? what is the mystery behind the seeming strengthening of wicked forces some of you have dreams and you see all kinds of spirits appear to you you are trying to call jesus they shut your mouth with all your knowing of jesus jesus and they stand and they laugh question who empowered them if satan was created are you prepared for this year of the rain we are going to talk we are, we are going as deep as god will help us go because we must answer some questions let me tell you when you answer these questions you will, you, you will start laughing at what used to make you cry because when you see it you know that uh -uh, this is the one plus one this is what made it happen and i told you that every time you catch a light what happens in the spirit grace is given to you to walk in that reality so you can see five people struggling over a demon go out go out and you will only pass no prayer light the spirits know what they are seeing you see that because the strength of evil is darkness the bible calls them rulers of darkness not rulers of light whenever there is darkness they are authorized to rule all religions of the world claim to connect people to wealth to joy to happiness to life to peace and to god or some kind of higher cosmic power for assistance that's the whole bit behind every world religion is that not true if somebody comes to take you now and says mary ann i want you to be part of the confucius religion you think you will just come won't i promise you something i'll promise you wealth and happiness i'll promise you that whatever you want speak certain things and it will happen right if mary ann speaks it and it happens she will invite Shei and say, Shei, it's easier than that other thing you are doing. Shei will first say, I don't believe it. When life presses her to the world, she will adopt it. The strength of this religion is that the suffering of mankind is endless. And so eventually, people will search for solution anyhow. Are you getting me? By the way, many of these religions have their branches in Africa. You would think that our suffering or our our backwardness in technology will make us say what is all this find out how many africans do they are not christians they are not muslims they are not hindus right they are something else and they have followers there is an acclaimed personality in this nation i i, I told you that i've repented from mentioning names acclaimed personality who i think for 48 years or thereabout i don't know if it was him or or his brother or somebody who never came out never came out for about 48 years look 
even if you are sitting down for 48 years, power somehow the devil must come upon you. He must land upon your life and interact with you. Sacrifices that men have made. Now the question is, brothers and sisters, if God is good and God is great and he does not eschew evil, what would be the explanation to the seeming empowerment Preachers have thought that the power you have, the power Satan has is your power or he collected it. How did he collect it? Collect it back. The question, how did he collect it? You know, we generalize things that we owe people. Demon is working with something that is solid and provable. Hallelujah. You prayed about something. The answer did not come. Your brother said, come, let's go and visit somebody. They visited the person in two days. The answer came. Is that true? It's true you gave thanksgiving in church, but we really know where that answer came from. Is that true? A woman cries to God, comes to we preachers, and we prophesy in the name of Jesus. I command that cancer to go. Nothing went. Is that true? They just respect us and they won't publish anything on the newspaper. And they quietly go and meet another person. And they invoke things and they have the baby and women of God come and claim the glory. It's better let's sit down and ask ourselves the truth. And answer these questions. Or keep telling lies. There are many people telling lies in church. Many of the miracles people claim to get in church. I am telling you. They got it outside the church. They consulted a lot of powers. There are families today who will never give their children in marriage until they go and ask certain people. And they confirm, is that true? Whether, whether you are a pastor, whatever you believe, keep your westernization. They will go and consult. Even if it means them buying goat, ram, sheep, human being, they will consult. Is that true? What then is this mystery? There are five religions, major religions, out of the 4,200. The first is Hinduism. The second is Buddhism. The third is Islam. The fourth is Christianity. And the fifth is New Age. There's no time and it's not within the scope of the teaching to tell you what this individual sect, if I will call them, believe. There are others who believe like the Hindus, for instance. Hindus believe there is one great God, but he expresses himself in many ways meaning there are many ways to approach him right so they can have many kinds of deities or envoys that help you communicate to this god and they believe in several doctrines of reincarnation buddhism many people think buddhism worship buddha no they just feel that buddha is the person who has been able to attain that highest level of consciousness as they call it and so they model after his life same with all the other religions new age is the recent teachings that was perpetrated by the kingdom of darkness under new age you are god it's a it's a little stealing away from the bible all these religions there's no time i would have proven to you that they all have their origin from the bible that's why they can prove to any christians that's why christians are the most vulnerable is that true they take bible and show you what supports their belief and you say wow this thing is in the bible meaning god must support it there comes that theory that all roads still lead to the same god have you heard those those devilish teachings and so people tell you don't worry when you go to the harbor list you say look don't be scared with all this color not i'm doing it's still the same thing it's just different ways of invoking the same god and then he invokes the color not and he says psalms 1 verse 3 i say ah psalms Abba. i know psalms go ahead right to now justify that because psalms 1 was mentioned god is in it is that true what deceit what deceit all power belongs to god now watch this i want you to know this the fallen angels hallelujah those we call the fallen angels i've taught us but i'll repeat it again just for the sake of establishing a few things the fallen angels 
when they came to the earth please listen to me they interacted with men and part of that interaction was responsible for supplying certain deep informations don't forget that they were all in heaven right certain laws are god's own laws and they are made to happen how many of you go to the farm and pray and fast for crops to grow please tell the truth after you sow you go back and say oh god no once you sow it to the earth you go back a man can kill another man and steal his land and sow and still reap a bumper harvest because of the existence of physical laws so it is god has put spiritual laws are you getting my point now for spiritual laws to work please come i'm establishing something come sir for spiritual laws to work in the spirit a spirit must assist you in activating its operation are you getting the rules for any spiritual law at all to work there must be a spirit entity that will assist you it is in partnership with a spirit before any spiritual law can be activated so if i am a magician and i'm doing a lot of abracadabra for instance there must have been a spirit that was invoked appeased or a demand is placed upon him is that true now let's explain our traditional festivals what happened what is the whole goal of many traditional festivals they first appease certain spirits either with people who must die or sacrifices and when those spirits are appeased the mediums that interface between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm let the people know that ah this goat the spirit has, has eaten it although you are seeing a physical goat the priest ends up eating the flesh physically uh, uh, the honorarium the, the, everything goes to the priest but i'm saying that the whole goal is that the sacrifice has been received is that true that's what happens no man by his strength can activate spiritual laws are you getting my point there must be the assistance of a spirit watch this i want to shock you now the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws just follow me the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws the spirits of dead men can activate spiritual laws ancestral spirits can activate spiritual laws demons and spiritual wickedness that operate in the heavenlies on the strength of the fact that they are spiritual entities they can guide men to activate spiritual laws watch this so there is a universal law in the spirit for anything to be of god and to carry to carry god's signature there is only one spirit that validates are you getting my point the holy spirit is the only spirit authorized the most holy spirit of god the only one authorized to activate any spiritual law such that god becomes involved and the glory goes to god are you getting my point that means watch this it is possible that i can use magic power and look at sam and do a miracle a real miracle it happens but it did not happen by the spirit of god but because it is a manipulation of a spiritual law it will happen accurately are you getting what i'm saying that means i can give a woman a child but not by the spirit of god is that true i can use the advantage of my partnership with another spirit and remove cancer from her stomach and put back another spirit that means i can receive word of knowledge from a spirit accurate word of knowledge but not from god are you are you getting what i'm saying when you understand this listen to me you will hold the holy spirit as a matter of life and death are you getting my point now the problem with many men of god is when they started their journey they started with the holy spirit 
but they allowed their passion to make them leave the holy spirit so when the holy ghost said wait i'm schooling you in this area they said i'm in a hurry i must enter prophecy i must enter this holy ghost you can go and another holy spirit another spirit really not holy another spirit continue the journey are you getting the point and because they seem to have been progressing in spiritual things that spirit of deception made them feel that is the continuation of the ministry of the holy spirit so although in them they feel something is wrong there is there is a mixing many men of god in this country around that we call fake are not fake even those who do magic most of what has happened is a perversion are you getting me they went under certain people certain hands were laid in them and certain demonic forces were invoked to begin to work with them and it activated certain possibilities and they started gaining knowledge on certain laws Is God helping us? Or are you afraid of the teaching? You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul I know you will be changed His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul For you are being changed His glory is been revealed when the spirit takes over your soul. Listen, when you hear us talk a lot about the Holy Spirit and emphasize Him, it is because there are other spirits already. And if you do not embrace the Spirit of God, you will meet with another one eventually. The day you need a job, you will meet with one. Hear me, look up. You never go to a herbalist. And return the same way you came did you hear what i said you will never impossible every man communicates to you out of the strength of the spirit that assists him if you come to me for help and i'm a magician and you are watching me do the magic you finish and say nice man you think you just left but you did not live alone automatically that's why you will return again someone makes you the people inside and outside both those who wanted to come or did not come the spirit of the living god drew you is that true when you understand these brothers and sisters you will not be impressed just by everything that happens physically you will seek to know what is the motivation and the spirit behind the operation many of us are are very once you see supernatural things you are happy it doesn't matter whether it came from the pit of hell or wherever you are just happy right and right now we live in a generation where many people want to enter prophecy young people want to enter prophecy and 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 they want to enter world of knowledge they want to enter dimensions now nothing is wrong with that it's because of the revival that is coming but satan is already preparing a major deception because he has seen it that's one of the reasons why i'm teaching this there is a major arsenal of deception that the devil wants to release to the nigerian church where there will be an outburst of a seeming outpouring but it's not the outpouring of the holy ghost and you will see men move in charismatic dimensions you will see people do things like angels right almost no limits to their impossibilities and even they themselves would not know that they are being deceived are you seeing why the book of revelations and the rest prays that even the elect can be deceived i have prayed for many people in meetings anointed people ministers of the gospel and as i minister to them i may never get to tell them but they may think what they are receiving in that meeting was impartation 
what they were receiving was first deliverance from a strange spirit acts chapter 16 don't turn there remember a lady who had the spirit of divination is that true did she give people word of knowledge please answer me and the bible says when some businessmen found her they said you are exactly what you are looking for and they started using her you pay money to prophesy you think if the people were not getting results they will come back they were getting results she will say this will happen and it will happen and when paul i like paul so two spirits paul had a word of knowledge her too she had her own word of knowledge two spirits right and paul looks at her and she begins to say these are great men of god you know what she was looking for she was looking for partnership because human beings cannot discern the difference so that she knew that paul was only visiting the city so let's be friends so that when you leave the city they will say ah, ah if paul is not here i am here pastors hear me you must be careful in this day and age the kinds of meeting and ministerial associations you join yourself with there are many of us they invite you everywhere to preach with everybody and your answer is yes sir you think you are saving sinners you will enter the midst of devils without knowing and they will corrupt the authenticity of the grace of god upon your life are you getting what i'm saying it will be a three-day meeting you will be the one to start first you will start and there will be mighty signs and wonders when you finish devils will come and hug you and you will snap together and then the next day people will come and they'll say just like the servant of god ministered yesterday we are continuing and people will catch strange spirit there are meetings people have gone to the moment they left the meeting lost came upon their lives and they started looking for ladies uncontrollably they fell under the anointing they rolled around and prayed in tongues and the brother got up with miracle power and love for girls confusion how can i be moving so much in the anointing right or somebody gets up and just begins to steal the reality of spiritual news we constantly interact with this law watch this spiritual laws are very powerful because they are not only creative they can change realities in this physical realm are you following my teaching now that is the reason why a magician can hold a handkerchief and say sam hold it they say roll it and sam will roll it and sam will bring out a foul how does handkerchief change to a foul right what they simply did was to take advantage of the laws of creation and manipulate it are you getting my point and what is the goal the goal is to convince you to come into partnership with the spirit that is assisting them the spirit that is assisting them is not assisting them for nothing i hope you know that when jesus was on the earth he was not the only one doing miracles i hope you know remember there was a certain time the disciples were angry and they were complaining that there are some people that are doing miracles somewhere oh, jesus you are the happening man where did this and we are your other people so if it's not you it should be us where are these strangers coming from again and jesus made a very controversial statement he said whoever is not what against us is for us ah spiritual laws so deborah could look at the stars and say stars i understand what you represent to the inhabitants of the earth align yourself in a way that the powers that the men use for war will not work and the bible says the stars fought for deborah with the permission of god joshua my namesake in the bible what happened to him he looked at the sun and said if this sun goes down they are going to kill our people because of that sun stand still right daniel went to bed and the secret was revealed and he said oh king i know what you saw you saw a being an image stand with the head of gold the breastplate of silver 
and we saw clay mixed with metal at his feet and he began to describe the fall of different empires the Christian empire the Babylonian empire and down to the new age that attempts to communicate towards virtual reality that's the last empire the feet that is a mixture of clay and iron one side the government is soft on another side the government is hard it's a mystery he saw it described brothers and sisters listen to me the the proof that god is in a thing is not just in the result but the spirit that initiates and sustains that process this is where i'm driving at the proof that a thing is of god the holy ghost must be both the initiator and the sustainer of that spiritual process otherwise it is fetish it is demonic it is from darkness even if it produces a real result i'm giving you the reason now is producing a real result because it was the manipulation of a physical law or a spiritual law and because of the advantage of the superiority of the realm of the spirit over the physical realm it will produce results watch this every spirit that initiates a process leaves a signature of itself upon that process are you hearing what i'm saying when julius Baga builds what do they leave they build their their logo is that true if pw builds they leave everything meaning if satan gives a child he will leave his signature right if satan heals the sick he will leave his signature when you know this you will know the reason why many people do not experience complete deliverance or complete healing or many there are many reasons but the major reason is because satan comes to steal kill and to destroy so although he uses spiritual law there must be darkness in his operation so satan will give you a miracle that will create another problem right one miracle that creates another problem and you come to him he gives your family money and then gives another person the spirit of drunkenness when you come as drunkenness is being solved barrenness follows right there is a signature one law being activated and causes another one that's why it is the blessing of the lord that can make rich and the there will be no sorrow there is always a signature of darkness that signs upon whatever comes from satan please hear me tonight not every open door is anointed the fact if you force a door in the spirit it will open thank you jesus christ there are secular musicians that sing and for those of us who used to listen to their songs or those who listen around as we pass by when you hear their voices you know that this voice is it has a glory that is not physical are you getting me spiritual laws manipulated but they must pledge allegiance to the spirit that assisted them that's why you listen to the music and physically you receive the glory that looks like from heaven but it does something to your spirit man because those laws help satan to continue his agenda in the earth is god speaking to us tonight so number one realize that there are spiritual laws number two realize that no man can activate the operation of spiritual laws until assisted by a spirit entity number three there are many spirits that can activate spiritual laws spirits of the dead all kinds of fallen spirits but god has only one spirit that is permitted authorized to search his heart and activate these laws according to his counsel for man and the name of that spirit is the spirit of the living god is the holy ghost spirit of the living god is the whole is number one we have not allowed the spirit of god to teach us 
these operations of the spirit so that we can align ourselves with these laws of the spirit i may just touch on one of the law or maybe two of the laws really we we'll just touch on two of those spiritual laws and then we we'll just end because i want us to pray hallelujah praise the lord laws of the spirit watch this this guy is playing this did you know that he's activating a law a spiritual law what he's playing is a language your senses don't understand but your spirit understands it that's why you want to sit down and keep listening to it are you hearing what i'm saying the melodies you know why many people are addicted to secular music honestly it's not just that they are bad people is that those melodies are languages they draw your spirit but because those who sing them have fraternized with certain spirits they draw you and they induce the operation of certain strange spirits so you hear him play what he's playing he's playing the strings and he's, he's doing something to your spirit man if a heavily sits down and plays you will keep enjoying and you will fall down but not under the anointing of the holy ghost you will fall down and stand up and something will land on you are you getting that now so it matters what spirit you sit under it matters what spirit produces the result that you celebrate it matters not just that results are being produced brothers and sisters hear me if we do not rise to understand the laws of the spirit we who are the sons of light i want you to know that many people will run to the devil and he will give them the result they want by operating spiritual laws and take their souls in exchange if we do not rise to contend for the power and the grace that will cause fruitfulness in the life of women they will go to babala was every day we can be grumbling and be calling everybody fake and calling everybody we have to be careful because some of us are the ones who are fake not just because we are going to have a list but we have refused to hold on to that which is real see that praise the lord the holy spirit must be the initiator and the sustainer of every spiritual knowledge we receive this becomes our only guarantee to escape perversion the holy spirit is the only guarantee that will escape perversion please let me surprise you and understand me you can take just this bible verbatim without the presence of the holy spirit you can still hold get into error are you getting me you can still hold the bible blindly and you will still get into error there are many people who go to herbalists i counsel a lot of people and some people come and meet me and they or their children or wives have gone to herbalists and they say they go to the herbalists and they see many books and they see holy bible holy bible was produced by a publishing company some of the people who produce this thing are not even born again is that true they are just doing business zondervan or whatever publishing company but it is the presence of the spirit of the living god meaning a demon spirit can still come upon this and give it another interpretation that's why every sect of the christian faith uses this but they got another interpretation by the interaction of strange spirits genesis 11 that's what happened to nimrod kush the origin of witchcraft nimrod kush these fallen angels appeared to him in fact before genesis 11 the days of noah the bible says strange aliens started coming upon the earth is that true and they started sleeping with the daughters of men brothers and sisters our ladies are smart people do you think an angel will just come with wings and horn and say um marianne i'm in love with you would you run if you see a beast with tail with horn says i'm before he says i'm in love you will run away these beings were not daft they came and walked like men i told you angels don't have wings and there is no record of angels with wings in the bible those who have wings are cherubims in fact angels appeared with people they ate with people in the bible is it not true angels ate with people in the bible when the angel appeared to mary she didn't say i'm afraid she wondered what the salutation not the angel meaning they had been seeing them 
when the angel appeared to Zechariah and all of these kinds of people, it is the seraphs that cover. Cartoon films have, have created these things based on their interpretation. And now we are not criticizing them, but they have not helped us to understand the reality of spiritual things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we following now? Ah, I sense the presence of God. There are so many spiritual laws. I want you to know that. If I ask you what are the physical laws, you will name them. Sir Isaac Newton, in his study of mechanics, came up with several laws, right? There are the, the our fundamental laws, the first, second, third law. There are all kinds of laws. Laws of thermodynamics, conservation of matter, physics and chemistry has all kinds of law. Newton's law of universal gravitation. There are all kinds of law. Chemistry, Lechetlier's principle of equilibrium. All kinds, the Schrodinger equation. All of these things are men and women coming together in an attempt to explain laws. There are laws that guide our understanding into quantum physics. Right? When we do chemistry, qualitative analysis and all of that we try to use the colors or or the things that emanate from solutions to be able to help us know what um, ion or whatever it is that is there all of these are physical laws in the same way there are spiritual laws spiritual laws spiritual laws bless you sir sorry hallelujah let's touch on two of these laws can we I read an article there is a powerful series on finance when we are teaching that one we'll share it but let me give you the preview the anchor scripture to that that series is thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over there was a relationship between the anointing on his head and the running over of the cup Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup running over. Hallelujah. Now, a wealthy man was once asked what the secret of his wealth was. And I got to find out that all he said was he found an ancient manual. Right? A manual that dates 2,300 years ago. Written by a Greek philosopher that manual they seem they said seem to contain some magic powers that even if you read just the title alone fortunes will begin to come to you i know some of you with all this message i say where is that manual i can ask god for forgiveness where is that manual <laughs> repent this is the year of the rain many of you have, have suffered it doesn't matter what where is that? Some of you will go and browse it after this, this meeting. Is there an online version? Let me go come and read it and come for miracle service. Hallelujah. That means, you know what this Illuminati and secret societies and all these occultic organizations do? They are men and women who interacted with these spirit beings and they reveal to them a lot of these spiritual laws they reveal to them that this universe is not just sun they reveal to them that air is not just air water is not just water and they have excellently archived this principle through centuries right let me tell you these were the very principles that kings use did you hear that in ancient times king has kings had scrolls and certain things were written in fact part of the writings were magic formulas that will open certain doors you see them in some of the films that you watch all these things were an aberration of spiritual laws what does that tell you that means truly all things are available for life and godliness if we can allow the holy spirit take the word of god and guide us all things are really possible hallelujah one of the most prominent business law among many business people is what they call the law of attraction. I, I don't believe it in that sense. And that law teaches that 
it is it's a it's an extension of of newton's law of universal gravitation that the earth is a living thing right and it begins to say all kinds of things and it credits the power to modern nature it makes it look like modern nature is supervising our our, our activities that's that's demonic from the pit of hell the devil will never give credit to god and they have used it and made children brilliant in school they have used those laws how many of you have have have, have seen all these things they spoke about uh, they speak about hypnotism and all of this sort i know i'm stretching you tonight some of you are wondering who am i now am i a christian no, <laughs> listen i'm training you because one day many of you who want to go abroad you will go abroad and you will look for living faith and dunamis and redeem you will not find anywhere the only one you will find is a temple a temple you must greet the priest to resume your work and once you go there they will look at you and when you will not bow they will ask you questions and you say in koinonia I was taught abc and they laughed they say really you know lack of exposure is what is making some of us comfortable with this our christianity because we think the whole world is like zaria when you go out of this place and see the way people hate god you will know you need more to stand is that true that's why god refused you from going abroad because you would have you would have you would have converted two days you would have you would have left god by the time they bamboos your mind and then they tell you okay just read this portion and you read this portion and you go out and people start calling you from nigeria and sending you money so what is going on ah say let me read the other parts that i didn't read again you think you won't do it hallelujah and the holy spirit has guided me through these spiritual laws a lot of them have been preached in the body of christ but even those who have preached them have not preached them with the level of revelation and gravity they just preach them because one person had another man of god preach it. hallelujah number one my goodness pray in tongues for one minute say lord open my eyes something is about to change in your life now i've had several encounters through the word of god i'm about to share with you i've read it in books over the years but when god began to open me up to it it changed my life forever proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 Let's see how far God will help us. We have to stop somewhere to pray. What you are about to learn must change you. I'm telling you, you will be so changed, you will be surprised. Many of you will carry the presence of God. You will carry the glory of God. You will see breakthroughs happen in your life in ways that will surprise you. Everybody read, please. One, two, read. Just the first portion, the first clause, one to read. Listen, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will become, so he already is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he, so he. I learned and I have seen it. I taught the heads of department during our retreat a bit of it and the Lord has permitted me to share this now. That your life, listen to me, your environment and the quality of your life is a reflection of both your mindset and the sum total of your belief system. Listen to me. Your life, the quality of your life today the quality of your life, the quality of your environment, the quality of the works of your hands and the things that you do is a direct reflection of your ideologies, a direct reflection of your perceptions about God, 
about life, about wealth, about whatever it is. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart. That means your life will eventually open up and reveal to the physical what is in your heart. A powerful spiritual law that your life and your environment will eventually become a reflection of your reality. My goodness. My goodness. That means heaven is a revelation of God's mindset. Heaven is a reflection of the excellency of his thoughts. Earth is a reflection of the mindset of mankind. Selfishness. Watch this. I don't know if it was last week or so that, that I said it. I think I shared it during the retreat. Take a security man. Is that true? Take him to the office. Assuming you have a, a corporation with three story buildings. The last story building belongs to the CEO. Take the security man to that story building. Leave him there for two weeks. That office will start reflecting his mindset. Right? Immediately. Because when the man sits on that chair, his mindset will refuse that reality. First, he will feel he does not qualify for it. And then second, he will be afraid because he will think that after a while, they will come and take it. So he will say, let me steal and loot. The first thing is he will remove, whether, what did I say that day? Stabilizer. He will steal the stabilizer and run away and sell it. I say, how can you put a the big stabilizer, 10,000? I mean, the, the light is regulated from NEPA on or, or what, what they call them now? Power holding company. Praise God. So he will steal it. The next time he will see a beautiful artwork and he will say, how much will they sell this one, please? He say, 20,000. I say, go and sell it. There are two. Sell one and leave one. Right? You give him a glass cup. He says, no package them together let's sell it buy me rubber cup please I'm, I'm contented his mindset is already playing out he will step into the place dirty and won't clean it right he will eat food and leave it there he will leave that document he will take any piece of paper and clean water with it not knowing what the document is at the end of two weeks that office has reflected his ideology that's why those who get who wants to be a millionaire none of them ends up being a true millionaire after five years because what they are, what they have gotten does not subscribe to the truth the principles that brought it you never become wealthy by receiving dash money i'm telling you this there are people who receive hundred thousand every month maybe from parents or well wishers but the revelation they have about prosperity about god about money drives wealth away from them is that true are you getting me there are men of god whose churches you will never see miracles happen because there is a mindset about miracles they have that will never allow the holy spirit to bless people is that true they don't want to see anybody fall under the anointing they don't disturb us with noise we want order in this church and because of that although they are god fearing the holy spirit wants to do great things but their ideology so listen to me the only way to change your life is to change your mindset and your perception listen to me i was teaching the leaders and i taught them this i told them do you know why some ministries have the best of everything have you wondered why you see certain ministries the best keyboardists the best um computer um, people the best sound people let me tell you why because the 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 mindset of that man right will bring to that ministry people who are consistent with his ideology there goes the same birds of the same feathers do what so the bible says this in proverbs chapter 4 now right 4 verse 23 it says guard your heart you see that with all diligence this is the bible it says keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are what the issues the quality
quality of your life is locked up within your mindset. I believe God for anything. I believe God can take this ministry to any height. Hallelujah. I do not ever believe that there can be limitations in the work of God. That's my mindset. Right? That's why you see members of living faith. For instance, they are men of faith because they are a reflection of the conviction of the founder. Being a man of rugged faith. It's in living faith you hear that a man died and they carried him and rubbed oil from his head to his toe till he came back. And they come to testify. Do you have the gods to do that kind of thing? It's in living faith you hear that a man died and for three days his wife was with the man on the bed and said, you are still my husband, you are alive. And after three days, he comes back to life. He did not need to necessarily change them. He first changed himself. Listen, if you are not changed, your words will not carry power. Your words only reflect the authority based on the change that has occurred in you. That's why, see, let me tell you, if Creflo Dollar or any of these people who are really well, they come right now and teach you on prosperity some of you will be crying and you hate poverty forever not necessarily because what they are sharing is deep they are communicating their reality if sam comes and holds the mic and begins to worship what he is reflecting to you is an overflow of his reality the deposit of the anointing within him are you hearing what i'm saying that's why you can listen to another musician and nod your head and Frank Edwards for instance can sit on his keyboard and play the same song and you are crying brothers and sisters leaders influence people by becoming the change they want the people to be right that means when I become convicted by my ideologies it will influence your perception and it will be easy to change you that's why the more successful a man becomes the easier it becomes to influence others because his life now has sufficient testimonies are we getting blessed many of us want to see changes in our lives in 2015 hear me change will never come if you are still blaming people you and god in partnership with his word are the only requirements for that change to come if you do not allow the word of god to renew your mindset i promise you you will never get anything in your life that has not first become a reality and a deposit in your spirit is somebody hearing what i'm saying that's where it is out of this that all kinds of religions bring a lot of metaphysics and what they call um, astral meditation, right? So they tell you, put a picture of the, the jeep and you look at it and say, ah! They say, now see yourself in the jeep. They say, I'm driving. You see, that is madness. But I'm only trying to tell you that they stole those laws. They are an aberration, a corruption of spiritual laws that's why whenever god wants to bless a man god convinces you and makes sure you agree with him if you don't agree with him it will never happen in your life for a long time god kept telling abraham i want to change you abraham could not get it because of his idol worship mentality and god said come out i don't know what to do to you. come out he says start counting the stars abraham was counting and he was seen, he will count and miss. God said, do it, just continue. And his mind was acclimatizing. And Abraham said, wow. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. When the angel appeared to Gideon, Gideon said, oh, oh, don't deceive me. The angel took time. He didn't quarrel Gideon. Because he knew that if Gideon did not agree with him, nothing would happen. And Gideon said, I need proof. Let the cloth be wet let the ground be dry he said no problem if that's what it takes to adjust your mindset to authorize us go ahead and Gideon said now don't be offended let the cloth be dry I, I want to convince myself when Mary said how shall these things be Gabriel owed her an explanation and it took time to explain and she said I believe I, although I've never seen how a woman gives birth without a man but I believe and he said, be 
it unto me according to your word. Instantly she got pregnant. Zechariah had seen a lot of spiritual laws. That's why when he doubted Gabriel, he said, let's shut the mouth of this man. He's going to use the next spiritual law I'm about to teach you to change what we want to do. Is somebody learning something? Hear me. This is what makes ministry easy. I never spend time just wondering how do we publicize to get crowd. Koinonia will be a reflection of the quality of both the spiritual, the intellectual, and the physical ideologies of the leaders. You change a system by changing the leaders. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of our fathers did not change themselves. They took one bottle of Buddha and slapped you when you took one cup. Did you change? You see that? Because they have become a reality for you and they are saying, if I catch you drinking, that's the day I will kill you. Go and buy me Buddha, Joe. They just finished talking to you and they said, go and buy it. Please hear me. If you want to see changes in your life, you are going to have to find out what ideologies have kept me where I am. There are some of you who never believe God can bless you. Right? As you are looking at me right now, if God even says he will give you 100,000, you say, Amen. You know that kind of unbelieving Amen. Listen, let's not make God look like a liar. This is the year of the rain. There are some of you who God wants you to walk in levels of anointing you have never seen. There are some of you who want to, God wants you to walk in certain depths. But do you believe him? There is nothing God has told me that I've not believed. I don't announce things till I'm sure I've believed it. When I believe it, I don't care who believes it again. So be it. The word of the Lord will come to pass. When God told Noah, he said, rain is coming. Build an ark. Do you think Noah just said, yes, sir? No. Noah would have said, God, my name is Noah. Your name is Yahweh. You're, you are almighty. We are not the same. Convince me. Convince me. When Noah was convinced, after 120 years, based on X timing, he still didn't give up. We talk about Abraham who waited 25 years. What of Noah? Noah waited 120 years. I'm sure people will say, look, when we were 50 years, when I gave birth to three children, this stupid man was busy building this ark. He has been searching for gopher wood around the whole world to build, searching for gum, searching for a lot of things. And then when he finished, we now saw him going to the jungle, looking for every kind of bed. Imagine what they would have told his wife. Say, madam, did you have to marry this man? But listen, one day, one day, his confidence in God showed him. Listen, you may be tightening now. You are seeing what God is doing in your life. You are seeing the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. It may not show. The Bible says, Why we look not at the things that are what? Seen. But the things that are unseen. I'm giving you a scriptural proof. It said, For the things that are seen are what? Temporal. That means there is a level of confidence and renewal that can change anything you see before you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe this? Pastor Jakes is here. He will testify. Right from when the ministry, this used to be all of us. We form a, Aaron is here. We form a circle. And all just sit down on the floor. I made certain statements like a fool. Right? But today, and listen, this is not even it yet. You wait and see what God will do with us. Oh, I believe him. I believe him. Absolutely. Carve upon my heart this truth that sets me free according to your do you know your academic situation can change please i'm speaking to somebody do you know your destiny can change if you keep thinking we are the helpless nigerians i guarantee you after 50 years you will celebrate golden jubilee suffering but i will feed nations huh I may be rubbing granite oil as, as, as Vaseline, but a day will come. Why we look not?
brothers and sisters as i look at you i don't see the weak you that's why i say as i look at you i see nations nations who told you you will not be the mother of nations i'm 30 years so what so what about 30 years would you stand and say i saw when i was 23 i know that the lord told me i'm giving birth to a prophet and it's going to arise that vision is still there i am convinced yeah the things that we see are subject to change one day you are taking your bath and you see growths and tumors all around your body you just say hey this is how i'm going to die cancer and the devil said, not just cancer, fibroid, fibroid. Notice, do you know that many sick people may carry certain sicknesses for years and never fall sick because doctor has not told them. Now doctors, don't be, don't be sad. I'm just saying, because you, do, you did not know it was not your reality. Many men were carrying prostate cancer carrying all kinds of things many ladies carrying fibroids carrying a lot of things and nothing happened to them but the day they looked and said do you know do you really know the implication of ss are you aware that the way that this has been happening you won't get a child in fact the way we are looking cat is your womb self it's not looking like the womb of a human being you just say, ah. and you now start saying that means no marriage a godly brother comes and you say my brother i'm pitying you you i don't want you to suffer in this life reality i hope you are laughing and you are seeing i'm telling you the secret to some of these results that you see these are my contemplations those who know me know that my reality is defined i never surround myself with nonsense you don't come around me gossiping and, and gossiping and speaking because i know that i am absolutely in control this has become the mirror to my world this is how i see things i only see things consistent when i'm going for a meeting i know there will be an outpouring of the spirit i don't care whether they have faith or not i don't care whether they can believe or not whether they are instrumentalists to charge the atmosphere or not is irrelevant when i step there i know that i bring an atmosphere i carry my own spiritual climate me and the holy spirit a team the workers in this ministry have received of this spirit that's why in the afternoon they arrange chairs and they dress who guaranteed them that you were coming did you sign a form we having the same spirit of faith as it is written koinonia hear me tonight we are only 23 or 24 days into january you can sit down with this your belief system and you will celebrate christmas in this condition or you can rise up ah but i know people who love god they have died i know people who love god things have happened brothers and sisters we are talking about you here not your neighbor the just shall live by his faith hallelujah do you believe this i read a story of somebody 109 years still alive in fact three women they were even putting makeup 109 years alive and strong in the midst of this wicked world they don't expect what do you expect in your life see these are powerful spiritual laws the second law give me five minutes genesis chapter one verse three quickly please the creative power of words i know that we have been taught that words are powerful but I want to show you the spiritual dimension of words. There is a reason why God called himself the word. You know why God named himself the word. It says, and God did what? And God, not and God wished. Not and God expected. Not and God complained. He said the earth was dark and void and formless. And God, the talking spirit, said. The word said there doesn't mean, and God declared. What it meant was, God commanded it to be 
is so. The word said there does not just mean and God recited. No, God didn't recite anything. Say I'm healed, I'm healed. That's recitation. You are not talking. What many people have been talking in the body of Christ that they are calling confession is recitation. I'm telling you this. Con the word confess comes from the Greek word homologio. It's not just repeat what you say. It's you are giving an empowerment to say it. I prophesy as I was commanded. He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you read the verses down the line. It says, and God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. Listen to me. Words are powerful. Because when you speak a word, it activates spiritual laws and deactivates other laws. Listen to me. There are many laws that make realities to work. The key to activating their operation is in words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you speak, whether you realize it or not, something is loosed and something is tied. It depends on what is loosed and what is tied. Please follow me. The Bible says, how did he put it now? Whatsoever you bind, right? Do you bind just by tying a rope? Jesus looked at a fig tree and he didn't need to say the law of fruitfulness cease operation from this tree the law of regeneration stop i command the fertilizer don't enter the root again he just use words and activate all the laws that needed to be activated for that tree to shrink are you hearing what i'm saying so instead of learning all the laws god gives you the keys that activates them are you getting what i'm saying so when I declare and I say, I am healed, I release a lot of spiritual laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we stand now and I declare, I say in the name of Jesus, the power of God will start moving in this place. Suddenly you hear people falling and shouting. Why didn't it happen now? Listen. The words that I'm speaking are activating both the operation of angels, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Our words activate the dimension of God that is revealed in a meeting. That's why when during miracle service, the worship people sing songs that invoke that dimension. Are you getting what we're saying? If you know this, you will know that from morning till night, some of you have activated woes and tragedies in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, let's, let me show you a few scriptures. Our time, uh, I've been fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we've been closing so late. We'll see what we can do about it. It's just the passion in my heart. Psalm 141 verse 3. Media, please help us. Let's rush so that we get up and round up. Psalms 141 verse 3 It says set a watch O Lord before where And do what Keep a door Knowing that every time I speak My mouth didn't just open A door open in the spirit The opening of my mouth Is the opening of a door in the spirit It says set a watch Oh God this my mouth can lead me in trouble So set a watch set a watch over my mouth numbers chapter 14 verse 28 zipra to kashila kariata ko sopra ni kataya raba vindike sila kariaba numbers 14 verse 28 very quickly everyone read want to read 28 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in my ears so i will do what as i hear you say not wish he said let the redeemed of the lord he already called you redeemed but he said say it let the healed of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the anointing of the the anointed of the lord say so they are not reminding themselves they are 
activating that reality everybody say when i speak i activate realities say it again when i speak i activate spiritual laws that's right it depends on what law you activate but something must be activated when you understand this you will know that words are expensive let's look at just two more verses proverbs 18 verse 21 if we can look at that proverbs 18 you can write it down father you reign great are you lord you are greatly to be praised listen death and life are where did he say death and life are on top of your head did he say death and life are he says death and life are in the power the proceeds of the tongue and like a seed they that love it shall eat the fruit that grows from that seed the bible says the seed is the word in the parable of the sower what is the seed meaning every time you speak you sow the seed is that true he said the seed is the word so when i begin to speak even in tongues i'm sowing i'm activating laws in the spirit when i begin to pray my day is blessed in the name of the lord jesus i am lifted i'm activating spiritual laws and i authorize the spirit of god to begin to schedule opportunities to schedule certain things and you find out that after prayer you activate laws of favor as you are stepping out you bump into your destiny helper you call it coincidence the bible calls it life that your tongue released that's why job said what i have feared most has come upon me Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Please let's read it together. He that keepeth his mouth. Stop. How do you keep your life? Insurance. Answer me. I'm not against insurance. Do life assurance, life insurance. But the Bible, the written word of God, the living logos. He that keep, how do you keep your life in the spirit? by keeping your mouth ah. papa hagin said this kenneth copeland said this those guys said these things so many people i speak life i speak life i speak life he said i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing but i can only advise you choose he said he that keepeth his mouth keepeth what he said but he that openeth wide his lips speaking nonsense any day any time and saying it does not matter he says that he shall have what as a fruit brothers and sisters listen ladies when we are awake, when we are about to pray in the midst of your prayer you will lay your hands on your womb and pray and say no devil no devil are you hearing what i'm saying some of you are afraid right now. The rate at which ladies are scared of fibroid is alarming. You are just eating too much. You look at your stomach and say, this, this, thing, this is how it starts. I have the power to create. And I have the power to destroy. The power of words is in its ability to activate spiritual laws. That's what I want you to know many of us have been taught that words are powerful but what makes it powerful words are keys in the spirit they activate laws so now it's not just blind confession oh i'm rich i'm rich i'm rich i'm rich as if you are reciting a magic formula no that's madness you speak out of the abundance of knowledge that when i declare that i am blessed i am activating something you wait until we have the other series that we have there are so many things that you will learn this year two laws you have learned tonight the first one is that there are spiritual laws and that one of the laws listen is that to change your outside 
you change what is inside stop wasting your time whatever you don't like outside get the renewal the mind component of what you want outside bill johnson got it right when he wrote the book the supernatural power of a transformed mind i don't expect this ministry to ever go down we'll keep speaking it we'll keep rising i expect every one of you in this year to break on every side and whenever i pray for you that's what i pray i don't pray blindly and say lord may your will be done i know what his will is his will is not fake his spirit has revealed his will in his word i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper for i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah rise up on your feet we're going to pray we'll pray for just five minutes but i want us to take this serious because as we're praying something will be happening to you lift your voice and thank him for the word the reality of spiritual laws bless him bless him for the word don't trivialize what you have received it has changed kings it has made champions you only arise and shine when your light comes and then the glory of the lord rises upon you hallelujah three quick prayer points prayer point number one you are going to say lord let the ministry of the holy ghost be strong in my life so that you will open me up to these deep mysteries lift your voice and pray pray no matter your spiritual level even if you are just visiting for the first time pray from the depths of your heart please pray inside and in the overflow lift your voice and pray it's the year of the rain holy spirit overshadow me in a new dimension open me up to the mysteries and the depths and the dimensions hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to pray and say lord whatever needs to change in my life for my the quality of my life to change let the word of god change it change my inner reality change my mindset lift your voice and cry passionately your life is at the mercy of this prayer lord i desire a new level of excellence a new level of grace a new level of possibility in my life go ahead and pray help me to believe in you help me to believe in you help me to believe in you as the healer help me to believe you are able help me to believe you are mighty change my mindset change my perception change my perception about prosperity change my perception about protection change my perception about spiritual power change my perception about my academics change my perception about my marriage change my perception about my ministry about my business about my job about my husband about my wife about my organization 
Lift your voice and pray. Your life is a reflection, an eventual reflection of your convictions, of your perceptions. Oh, it's a powerful spiritual law. I pray you believe it. I pray you believe it. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Father, imprint in my spirit the revelation that my words are powerful. Go ahead and pray. Imprint in me. Lord, I cancel every negative word that I've spoken in my life. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Confessions I made when I was angry. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Dangerous laws I activated that killed favor in my life. Confessions that killed my prayer life. Confessions that killed my my integrity lift your voice and pray koinonia outside make sure you are praying no matter how far you are no matter how far you are connect with us in prayer hallelujah hallelujah now find a neighbor and for the next one minute i like you to activate laws over that person's life activate favor activate grace activate hunger for spiritual things close every door of witchcraft close every door of failure find a serious neighbor that came to koinonia to pray lift your voice and pray I bless this house in the name of Jesus. I command favor upon your people. I command favor. I command long life. I sow seeds of greatness. I sow seeds of power. I release the operation of the Holy Ghost upon lives, upon families. I command supernatural dreams. I command visions. I release encounters with the Holy Ghost. Encounters with the spirit of might. Encounters of favor. Encounters of power. I command no death, no accident, no terrorism, no bomb blast, no witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command every law that has been activated, that is being manipulated by darkness over your life to bring failure, to bring woes. I cancel it. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Bless your neighbor. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Let the fountain of the heavens be open for you. Let men look for you. May they bless you. May you become the subject of discussion. I bless your academics. I change your result. I change your genotype. I command promotion to your job. Increase in your ministry. Increase in your business. Increase in your anointing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Listen. What I'm teaching you now is the true spirit of prophecy. Many people speak, but the problem is we, do, we have not been taught what happens in the spirit when you speak. In one minute, I want to release words in your life. Listen, 
Now you know what happens. Listen. Demonic spirits, enchantments and spells, all they do is to activate laws against you. That's all that happens. When they enchant things, the Bible says in Job chapter 5, that you will be delivered from the scourging tongues of men. Men use their tongues to tie your destiny. Men use their tongues to tie your womb. But I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. Lift your hands and receive this prophecy. In the name that is above all names. I command opportunities. I command opportunities. I command favor. In the name of the Son of the Living God, I command favor. I activate favor from the realm of the Spirit. The reign of favor. The reign of goodness. The reign of favor. The reign of goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak against every infirmity that has challenged your body. The power that spoke it into being I cause that power and I command that that infirmity leaves your body now these hands that are lifted may men bring finances to that hand I prophesy it in the name of the Lord Jesus that this week that is coming these hands that are lifted I tell you, many of you will return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever manipulates your intelligence so that you don't understand what is taught, whatever tears the devil sowed among the wheat, in the name that is above all names, I release you from that power now. Hear me? anyone here who has been caused by your parents they did not know they were angry but they didn't know they activated a law that has made things work against you i stand under this apostolic office tonight i reverse that law in the name of jesus i reverse that law in the name of jesus for everyone that caused you i bless you I bless you some of us everything works for everybody until it gets to your turn things are so hard a little thing you have to suffer in the name of Jesus in this year of the rain I prophesy upon your life let supernatural ease come to your life whoever must call you and help you and open the door for your next level wherever they are in the name of Jesus the same way wise men saw the star and they went to Jesus with gifts I call them wherever they are may they come to you in the name of Jesus I release upon you grace beginning from today whatever you do will prosper every enchantment that killed your prayer life so you stop speaking you stop waking up in the night to pray and orchestrate things powers were invoked to make you sleep and not wake up and pray right now i stretch my hands to the heavens and in the name of the god of heaven i command those spells broken may your prayer life resurrect in the name of jesus Hear me the grace to wake up in the night and speak into the womb of the morning i release that grace upon you ladies whoever has called you weak and whoever has said you will not amount to anything in the name of the lord jesus i cancel that statement now in the name of jesus me whatever your life has been associated with before now sickness failure lack of spiritual fire 
In the name of Jesus, I change that situation now. I change that situation now. I change that situation now. Hear me. Any human agent responsible for where you are, except I am not called of God, in the name of Jesus, we release a sword of judgment. We release a sword of judgment. Hear me. I say it again that if there is any human agent that has participated in the downfall of your life, your finances, and your family, I command judgment now. I command judgment now. <laughs> 